Yeah, I said this last time, so I have to actually remember. Yeah, we are no longer a Guild Wars 2 stream. Guild Wars 2 is dead, guys, okay? Guild Wars 2 is a dead game, and I hate it. And so we have run away uh, from that category. Off we've gone. We're out of here. Okay, not. I'm joking. But no, seriously, no. Um, we, you know, tea time is a bit more general now. We've kind of freed ourselves up. We've broken the chain. We've unshackled ourselves from the game. Now we can talk about everything. Like before. Any we, flavor of tea yeah. is on the table now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Any flavor. You know, like it's, uh, you know, before we were contractually obliged to only talk about Guild Wars 2, uh, but now we're actually allowed to talk about all sorts of things. So, yeah, uh, prepare yourselves for that. Prepare yourselves for that. And, well, what a what a good way to start um, with that reminder because uh, the oh, what the hell is this card? But never mind. Um, we are going to be talking about something today, which is core to I think some of the complaints about Guild Wars Two, like the previous game we were talking about, uh, and that is reward structures, reward structures, and how to make a a game rewarding for the player. What that e what does that even mean? Because honestly. I don't even know at this point. I, I find myself confused um, at the way people approach games. Um, and I think this is something we can get a proper debate on because like we're, well, you know, we're, uh, I, I think I think me and Nike somewhat, we have like a slightly different approach to how this goes. And yeah, this the the topic of, the dis of this discussion is kind of sparked from me reading Nike's Twitter, talking about the sky scale and Path of Exile and stuff like that. So that game's almost certainly going to come up here along the way. And then, and then uh, I don't know, what have you been? What have you have you been playing any other games, Inks? Like what have you what have you been doing? Like do you, do you do you have any any like new perspective on on games um, from other stuff you've been? I mean, to? nothing else has come out, has it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not since no, twenty twelve. No, no, nothing <laughs> worth playing, right? Um, no, I've been playing Guild Wars two on and off. Uh, Magic the Gathering Arena. I I took a break from, but I'm back to playing that now. That's kind of it for me right now. I might pick up Red Dead Redemption 2 when it comes to PC, like pretty soon, right? I think. Well, Magic yep. the Gathering Arena has got a very good reward system oh, as God. far as yeah, I can tell. Kind of. In terms of vertical progression, <laughs> like as your as your deck gets better, like you definitely feel the power level, like as you like yeah, get closer sure. and closer to a meta like tier one deck, like the problem with Arena is the problem with Magic the Gathering in general, any sort of online card game, like uh, most people, myself included, are going to are gonna net deck, right? You're going to go out there, you're going to look for whatever the meta deck is or whatever the meta build is and play one of them. And there's usually many choices, which is great. The problem is if you're trying not to spend money on the game, then it's kind of difficult because what happens is you play a lower tier deck or some form of a, a meta deck but you try to replace cards to to make it still work but the power level is not there if you don't have every single card you're supposed to have so what happens is you win and lose for a while to to gain tiers but then you hit this happened to me the other day you hit a certain tier like i hit gold four and i couldn't win a single game because by gold four all the players now have most of the cards they need for a net deck or they passed it with the credit card. And the deck that I was playing, which is like a tier two or tier three deck, I, I just couldn't compete. So trying to get your dailies done to get gold in order to buy packs of cards, it just becomes a long, tedious process. And I think that turns people off hitting that sort of plateau in order to compete. So either you pull out the credit card and spend money, which most people don't want to do, myself included, or it becomes a game of I'll just play my dailies for two or three weeks to get more packs of cards to hopefully get what I want so that I can be competitive again. Well, yeah, I mean, it, that, that doesn't sound like the, uh, the the best way of deciding the game. That just sounds like you're kind of going to, to try and get the whales going you know like that sounds like <laughs> can can you play booster draft on arena or is it yeah. just pre constructed decks only so i, I would imagine just because like so in real life like professional level magic players like they play booster draft mostly right and that's where and they, so you invest you have to buy what three packs to play a booster draft like each player has to buy three packs and then if you play like 
I don't know, two or three different drafts a night. Eventually you just, at the end of like a couple months, you just end up with like an enormous amount of cards. Plus you like win prizes from the booster drafts or whatever. And you just end up like with enough cards to make whatever constructed deck you want from that. But I think there's a, I think online now there's a barrier that you have to pay gems and gems of course are bought with money. You can earn gems by playing the game, but they give you a lot fewer gems unless you have like a pre, unless you have a pre-constructed deck that you can play. So yes, you can booster draft, and yes, that is a popular and good way to get the variety of cards that you want. Because when you're booster drafting, you can, if you're looking for particular cards, of course, you can pick. You know, if a card comes up, you say, "I need that for a deck." You can just pick it. Might not be the best for your game strategy playing, but you can also look at a wider variety of cards and pick the ones that you want from that. Yeah. So like one of the IRL strategies is called like going infinite where you are a good enough player that you can like kind of win your local booster drafts and they might have like a $10 entry fee, but you're going to win on average $11 or more of prizes. Uh, like when you average all the tournaments over, over every weekend. So that eventually it it doesn't cost you anything to play and you're amassing a collection of cards. Infinite so, cards. Yeah. Yeah. So they call it going infinite because eventually you hit the point where you can make any deck you want and you don't have to pay to enter any tournaments. Like you're just free rolling at that point. And that's like, but again, you have to be like better than you got to be good. Percentage of people, you got to be good. Yeah, well, in your local area. Otherwise yeah. you're a feeder and you're yeah, feeding oh, yeah, yeah. the system. <laughs> Where someone else yeah. is going infinite on. There's a lot oh, of feeders. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, of course. Of uh, you know, you need to have the feeders, right? If you're, you know, if you're, if you're going to have the people who go infinite, right? Although you need people to feed into you. Otherwise, it's no good. So, I mean, that's, yeah. I don't know, that, that sounds, that's, I mean, it's, it's curious, like, on a, on a, uh, it's curious to think about this. Like, it's very easy to think about rewarding uh, stuff when you're talking about actual physical rewards, right? Like, when you have when you have these cards to to actually collect, you know, the, the rewards are very straightforward, right? You know, you get your you get the card that you're looking for, the rare card or powerful card that's really going to make a difference uh, in your deck and whatever card game it happens to be, like whatever collector uh, collecting game it happens to be. And then there you there you have their reward. But like, there's the, the, it seem it seems in gaming that there is this kind of like weird ethereal concept of like the, the of 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 reward systems and it's a lot less tangible right when you don't have anything real right you know uh like how, how do you how do you feel rewarded in in an online game or something like that you know i, I think a good example of this is like comparing hearthstone to magic the gathering right uh, because like well of course the magic has a has an online version as well which is you know which is intertwined i suppose in a way but with hearthstone like you don't actually own the cards right like you know the cards doesn't exist you can't trade it away you can't you know use it to barter with other cards or that sort of stuff uh you know it's just it's just something that you know you have in your deck but i still think it still manages to feel rewarding in other ways right because like even though it, it's a completely different method of ac acquiring stuff of acquisition like in hearthstone like they, they kind of back it up by making it kind of exploding all over the place with fancy effects and you get it and like the cards having a big impact when you play them as well so i think there's a lot that kind of goes into it like uh, it really goes into uh like making a reward system in a game uh just just in general but like i, I mean i i kind of i kind of want to get to the the, the main question like in, in your opinion like if you have a game like a physical game like any game like a card game in real life i uh, know a sports game or uh of course a video game as we're most likely going to be talking about like what what is the key to having uh rewarding game mechanics like is it something to do with the skill is it to do with the shinies like what what is it right like what what um what to you is a rewarding game right like what where's the the joy in the game come from in its mechanics well for me i would say it's just a meaningful sense of progression and that can come like from a lot of different ways like skill progression like like in an online game like gear progression or like stat progression like something like that um but skill progression is a lot harder to do which is kind of one of guild wars 2's uh problem because a lot of people aren't interested in that sort of progression and as a result the developers can't 
like force you to do it. So they have to give those people other things to feel rewarded rather than encouraging skill progression. But yeah, it's, it's basically any sense of progression. Uh, the sense that your time is being like the time you're putting into something is giving you more in return than the value of your time, essentially. Yeah. So you're profiting. You are profiting yeah. from your, uh, and, your, and, and, your and attention. Mostly it's an emotional profit. It's not even like, it's not like you can like, I mean, I'm sure some people do like sell their MMO accounts for like a lot of money Ooh, when they're done. Yeah. The but like for the most part, like progression is like an emotional profit. It's like I grinded this dungeon for a thousand hours and got the one in a hundred thousand drop plus two damage sword. Like I feel like amazing man because I'm the only guy on my server that has it, you know, like that feels that does feel good. Like that is a good feeling. So that's a sense of progression. That's a, that's completely emotional, even if you can't tangibly trade it for dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's definitely a really, really important part of progression, like particularly in the MMO sphere. Like this is something you see a lot in the MMO sphere. Like there are some games that kind of get by. In fact, there are a lot of games that kind of get by uh, without progression. Uh, but he, like a lot of the, the most popular titles, like this is something that's, it's really, it's really pervasive, isn't it? Like you, you end up having like a level, right? Even if it kind of doesn't really mean anything, like you, you just, you just level up. Like the more games you play, you get a number that goes up, right? You know, you gain experience, right? You, you gain, um, some kind of arbitrary thing that says, "Ha, you know, I'm, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm leveling up. I'm progressing through, uh, my, uh, you know, through, through all of this stuff, right? You know, like you have, uh, like e even, even in like RTS games, like even in StarCraft Two these days, you actually end up leveling up. Like the more games you play, you, you, you level up. Like you level up with each race, right? You know, uh, it doesn't really mean anything, but th they added this to the game because like this is something that people really, really enjoy, right? Like you, you know, kind of incremental improvements on absolutely anything. Right. And, and as you say, this is where, where Guild Wars 2 does tend to struggle. And it's because they went with the um, the horizontal progression uh, or, you know, kind of skill based progression in an MMO. Uh, and that is a genre where typically everyone's just kind of looking for uh, looking for a cookie to pick up. Right. You know, you want to you want to you want to feel rewarded by in a very literal sense. Um, but I, and, and that's you know, that's something that I, I think is, is kind of to be avoided, really, because like, you kind of. You put yourself in a really bad position. Like if you're if you're developing an MMO and you want to just keep handing people stuff, like it just kind of escalates and gets even more and more ridiculous. Like and this this happens so many times in um in WoW, right? Like in World of Warcraft, they keep having to like make the numbers go smaller because of how completely ridiculous it ends up being, right? I, I don't know exactly what expansion this was, but there was times when we were doing like a million DPS or something like that. I mean. What, what? What does a million DPS even mean? You know, like, well, that's, that's, that doesn't make any sense. Like, the numbers just get stupid, right? Like, you keep having to increment it and increment it and increment it. Uh, and, you know, that's, it's, it's really scary. And, and this is why I, I do, I will always stand by Guild Wars 2's approach on this, um, uh, to be honest. Like, maybe they're a little bit ahead of their time. It didn't go down that well because it just confused people a little bit. Maybe the execution was a bit off. Uh, but the approach where it's like, oh, yeah, like, the progression in the game is that you have fun in the game. Right, the progression in the game is that you get better at the game, and then you can do stuff easier, uh, and you know, and, and unlock new possibilities and approaches to the game. Like that's the progression in the game. Uh, that's that's kind of what it. That's kind of what it means to me. Right? Is um is uh, pro progression and a rewarding system is that kind of rewards you for being good at it, or, or rewards you for having knowledge or understanding the system. Right? Which is you know, that kind of harkens back to my old RTS days, right? Like the only reward you're getting out of that is either being beaten down by your opponent or demonstrating your supremacy over them, right? Uh, and yeah, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the way, that's the way I think about um, reward structures in games. But it's, I, I think you, you kind of need to have a blend of both because like the, the gaming community is not, D does not agree with me i don't think on the whole like people love cookies right and there's nothing wrong with cookies i mean dude hell like people play the original cookie game which is runescape like the that that is like the 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 dopamine game right like you do that if if you want an alternative 
uh, to, you know, recreational drugs, you just go ahead and like get level 99 in attack or something. And then you, you know, you get your natural high for you. Right. Or after your thousandth kill of imps, right. You have this like special item that you get. Uh, so, you know, it's, I, I'm not going to knock that. I'm not going to knock that approach either for sure. But I, I think there is, there is room for something more, but it might almost be, almost be like a, a genre thing. Right. Because like the, what, what, what we're talking about, right, with this kind of skill approach or like more, I suppose, more like horizontal or personal progression as opposed to very kind of very vertical, um, very straightforward, uh, you know, just literal progression. You're getting more powerful because you're getting more powerful in the game uh, because of the equipment you have. Like that's kind of like you see that in MMOs, but in a lot of games, like when you when you think about it, like the, the progression is, is it basically comes down to skill right in a way like you know a lot of competitive games uh, you know sort of like csgo league of legends dota right there is a level system right you can level up in them but the level is meaningless it's it's, it's kind of there to say ah yeah you've played a thousand games good job you, you did it you did it amazing you played so many games uh, well done yeah. Yeah, yeah, well done. <laughs> exactly. I I, I yeah. think I think rewarding I think the the reward systems in games depends on the type of person you are. For example, in Guild Wars 2, and, and this just more recently came to my attention with Guild MM, where most of us who level up, once you have the masteries unlocked and you're level 80 and you get a spirit shard, to most players, that means nothing. It's not rewarding. You don't care about it, really. But to somebody like Guild MM and the other people, part of his guild and part of his mindset, to them, that is a valuable reward. Because spirit shards mean money, mean gold. And they're playing the game to earn gold, to earn raw gold. Uh, so for them, leveling up and getting those spirit shards actually means a lot to them. That is an exciting reward for them. But to most players of the game, it's not, right? They, they don't care about it. They don't think about it. They don't even know how to use it properly most of the time. Uh, so it's, it's interesting, depending on the type of player you are, depending on the type of person you are, you know, there's there's a competitive reward and how do you reward competitive players versus how do you reward casual players? Uh, is the loot system in the game rewarding? Like Diablo or um, what's the game that you're playing, Nike? The, uh, the PoE. Diablo. PoE. Like 90% of the, and even Guild Wars 2, 90% to 99% of the drops you get in those games are totally useless. They're garbage. They're disenchant fodder or whatever. Um, it's the it's that one percent or point one percent drop you get where it's actually useful. That Guild Wars Two doesn't really have anymore. Guild Wars Two has actually has. gone backwards from even what it was at launch to now just yeah. giving you like colored yeah, gear bags yeah. Yeah, that are like essentially it. just. I mean, they just go on the trading post, really. Like that's all you do. Like that's I just wait till I have like a bunch of them and sell them in, on the trading post when I'm done. Right, and that and that doing. and that doesn't feel rewarding. Like, at no. least in PoE and Diablo, there's a chance or eventually you're going to get a drop that you want for your gear set or to play a particular build or gear set. But in Guild Wars 2, and maybe MMO RPGs in general, like, I don't think World of Warcraft is that different, that really, unless you're fighting a raid boss, you know. Um, or I guess if you're leveling up through dungeons or, or whatnot. But most of the time, you're not going to get a drop that means anything. And therefore, like, it doesn't, it's not rewarding. It doesn't feel rewarding. You don't feel good about it. You don't get that dopamine hit. You know, it's just like, oh, two blues and a green. You know, here we go again. Every every time you do something. And uh, I think that's it's boring. And I, I think it's that's tough. Like the, that's really tough in MMORPGs to make better. I, I don't even know how to make it better, really. So interestingly, like one of the things I was thinking about is a game like Path of Exile or Diablo you will unless you like all like not only mastering like the gameplay unless you master the economy you will hit a glass ceiling where you aren't really gaining better gear or better loot or or your net worth isn't increasing in the game because you just don't understand how to use the economy to like get better um guild wars 2 doesn't have that you can get like you don't have to know anything about the game economy to like achieve your goals in Guild Wars 2. Like you are not required to know like all the different little tricks 
of of what currency can be exchanged for what what item that can be converted into some other currency in Guild Wars 2. Like there are ways to do that. I think some majesty did like a video on like how to profitly profitably convert one currency into another. And but that's that is not necessary for progression in Guild Wars 2. You can get best in slot, perfect everything and do all the end game content without understanding a single thing about the economy other other than collect loot sell it collect loot sell it whereas if you tried to do that in diablo or path of exile you would eventually get to the point where to do harder content was requiring more money than you were making off the content you were doing and so at that point your progression comes to a halt because you don't know how to how to operate the game's economy and Guild Wars 2 does not ask you to operate the game's economy to get ahead. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, and I think that's, you know, a part of reward is overcoming something, right? Or having some kind of understanding of of the game. I, th- I think, well, maybe not to everyone, but certainly to, you know, perhaps the the more hardcore gamer, right? You know, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure about, like, you know, how needing to understand the game's economy to, you know, expend resources on how to get there, but uh, that, that does seem, that sounds a little bit annoying, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not yeah, going to lie. I'm, and I'm not saying I want that. I'm not saying that would be good for Guild Wars 2. I'm just saying it's not part of the Guild Wars 2 progression. So, like, for better or worse, it's not part of it. So, there there is a certain type of player who, like, who who is good at that like a guy like sam or guild mm or these guys are like masters at that and like they can figure out a game's economy and that and like the fun of the game for them is figuring out how to master the game's economy whereas you don't and and some games like i said require you to do it to get ahead to get to a certain level whereas guild wars 2 you do not have to interact with the economy at an advanced level yeah I would. I mean, I, I. I mean, I'm really in two minds about this sort of thing. Like when it comes to like forcing players to do things. Like on one hand, I think that freedom. Like you know, <laughs> I love me some freedom, boys. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the, the more options you give to the player, I, I think the the more scope there is, um, to have everyone experience rewards and enjoy the game in their own way. But on the other hand, I I do think it's almost necessary to force people to do things sometimes, um, uh, because otherwise they just won't. Uh, and then that can be to the detriment to the game. I mean, uh, 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 yeah, I mean, a good example is, is the game that I've been playing, um, which is classic World of Warcraft. Is that, you know, yeah, like I think some people would probably argue that, you know, like the amount of game time you have to put in to actually even start playing the content um, at the end of the game. And then also the amount of effort that is even required to do even one raid is, a, is like probably a little unnecessary. Like some people would say that's unnecessary, but tell you what dude like when you get those purples it feels good it feels damn good you know it's, it's a very rewarding experience because you know how much how much you've like slaved to, to get that character level up to 60 like get the right gear get the gold to even raid to buy consumables like all that sort of thing feels good uh and even though the crafting system is like not it's not good it's very basic uh in classic wow like because it's kind of aids to do it's kind of annoying uh <laughs> it's yeah it you know the, the little bonuses you get out of it are really you know it's it's very rewarding to use you know it it, it does feel good um and yeah like it, it's and also it kind of it, it automatically generates prestige and you, you could argue that it's kind of lazy design just to make the game a little bit annoying and difficult to get through uh to to, to get some prestige but it works dude like I, I this is such an alien experience to me like i i've just been doing some random dungeons uh on, on my warrior and people are like holy shit Dude, when, I, 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 and I quote, right? This warrior comes up to me and he says, like, when I'm a big boy, I want to be just like you, Teapot. I was like, what? I, what, 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 <laughs> what is this? I, 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 I mean, I play Guild Wars too. Like, everything's meaningless here. I, it's so unusual. Like, people, like, will whisper for me. Like, this happens multiple times. I've been pretty lucky in WoW. I've got a whole bunch of gear. I've got, like, eight epic items or something like that, right? And, uh, like, people will whisper for me and say, like, holy shit, dude. Nice gear, man. Like you're raiding molten core and Nyx here, right? Like, you've done it a load of times. You're taking down Ragnaros. As I like, like random people do this in the game. Like it's um, it, it's it, it like, if you if you make your game a little bit inconvenient and have some special stuff um in the game that not everyone's able to get um, then you know it just feels good. 
You know, it just feels good. Like in, in every game, like, you know, like if, if you have a certain rank, you get a shiny border, right? Um, you know, like, oh, wow, a shiny border right, around your name or something. Like, yeah, this sort of thing feels good. Like exclusivity, I think, is so important to the reward structure of a game. Like if you don't have exclusivity, like progression tied to exclusivity, then your game is going to kind of be, it's going to be handicapped when it comes to actually rewarding the player at the end of the day, right? Um, well, maybe, like, then again, maybe not. Like Guild Wars 2 seems to kind of do it do it okay right they kind of get the, the most people seem very happy with it but uh i don't know i think there are merits to merits to both systems as well like the, the only time okay the the only time someone has ever said anything to like that like that to me in guild wars 2 is like i was um i was i was in legend and pvp and then one guy whispered me this is a very this is a very long time ago actually holy shit wow um and he whispered to me he said no one else in the entire lobby has that badge good job dude right and that's the only time so i mean look it works dude it works even even guild wars 2 can do it with some good old years prestige. ago i used yeah. to get whispered when i was in the pvp lobby years ago i used to get whispered because i used to have the emperor title yep that titles aren't really noticed too much in guild wars 2 but i used to get whispered all the time how did you get the emperor title because players thought that it it meant something like you're the emperor of yeah. PvP, right Really, you just bought a bunch of tier three outfits and it means nothing. But people thought that Emperor meant something, so they would always whisper, how did you get Emperor? Like, that's really cool. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't live up to the hype once they find out what it means. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, yeah. Maybe I'm going to uh, be uh, accused of being toxic here. But um, if Gear Inspect was part of Guild Wars 2, I think you would see that more often because um, there's a lot... I would dare say the majority of players do not have full ascended gear, especially in the open world. Um, I mean, a lot of them don't even have full exotics. And if you could just click on someone and see what they had, not only would you see how under geared everyone is, but they would see how impeccably geared you are. And they would give you, they would do those things like teapot said and wow, where they whisper you and go, Oh my God, your gear is amazing. Like that would happen in Guild Wars 2. But the problem is everyone's gear is hidden, so no one has that sense that the the vertical gap between the two players, which is there, believe me. It's mm. there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> it on, is there. On, on top of that, and, and this has been talked about in chat, we've talked about it many times. Guild Wars 2 undercuts itself by putting out shinier, brighter objects on the gem store. So yeah, okay, I went and I went and killed Doom. I got my Doom chair. Hey, guess what? Here's this chair in the loot box that you can get that's even bigger and brighter. And then people are, you know, it, so the gem store often undercuts uh, the, the special rewards that do exist in, in Guild Wars 2, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. And, and I know chat's memeing, but it's not shaming people. It's almost like you're just being, like, an example. Like, yeah, running... That's... Like at like through the open world with full ascended, like with as many legendaries as you can have with all your infusions, some guy with like green trinkets clicks on you and like looks at you and he's going to be like, holy shit, look at this guy's gear. And it will it will seeing someone with better gear than you. I don't care what game you're playing. If you see someone with better gear than you, it does give you a desire to improve your gear. Yeah, I don't care what game you're playing. If you see someone ne near you who has better gear than you. You're gonna be like, "Fuck! I gotta get better gear. I gotta, I gotta get better gear right <laughs> now." Like that, and that would just add so much, yeah. To, like to, it, to it, these people's experience, because the people uh, who don't have good gear in Guild Wars Two, considering how easy it is to get good gear in Guild Wars Two, these people are probably oblivious to like how bad their gear is. Like, they are probably unaware. Like, they think it doesn't matter, or they think everyone's basically like them. Like, they don't know because they don't see the better gear in their face. Maybe they see a legendary weapon, but, like, they don't see the stats. They don't see the the ascended level on it. So, I don't know. I think it would help. I, I want to address to uh, someone in chat here who says the store needs to sell for the game. I understand that. I understand this is how Guild Wars 2 makes its money, how it continues to survive, and so on and so on. H however, you do need some things in order to entice people to log in and play the content. 
if the best stuff, if the best looking stuff is all on the gem store, you're going to bleed players eventually. Not right away, uh, but after a couple of years or where we're at now sort of in Guild Wars 2, um, you, you're going to start to bleed players because what is the point in doing the difficult content if the rewards you get don't look as good as the thing I can buy on the gem store for 10 bucks? Uh, so you do need some of those unique prestige rewards. I firmly believe that. And Guild Wars 2 is a couple, but it also lacks in in that in quite a few areas, I feel like. Yeah. And that it does it does it does make you even like I don't know, like I, I don't really buy a lot of outfits on the gem store. Like or, or any this is just for microtransaction games in general, but like the the way I see it is if you have like a big part of the end game being undermined by the cash shop, it just makes the entire game feel it makes it feel incredibly unrewarding. Like, like it, why why would like, re rewards in Guild Wars 2 feel kind of meaningless to to me anyway because like there's just yeah, there you know a lot of them like a lot of the really cool stuff it's in the cash shop right stuff like the Mistrange outfit which is probably like my favorite set of skins in the game bar legendary armor heavy legendary armor and it's and it's in the cash shop it's like why would I want anything in the game when this looks way cooler. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it, it does. You know, I, I hate to say it, but you know, it, do, it does kind of, uh, it does kind of undermine the whole, the whole structure there. If you ask me, like the point of Guild Wars Two is to look cool, and you look coolest by just whipping out the old credit card, right? I think that's it's a fundamental flaw. Uh, in, See, the, in, in a microtransaction like, model, right? I don't right? think I don't even think the best outfit is as cool as like the shittiest armor in the game. <laughs> like, I would rather run like starter. <laughs> armor skins with like weird like rainbow dyes that look terrible then run an outfit like because and, and it's because the outfits have no prestige like there's like literally nothing impressive about them because you can just buy them like it it, it just does not interest me at all like there's, I agree. there's something to be said like you could have like an ugly piece of gear but if it was like insanely hard to get and insanely rare and you had to like do like an insanely <laughs> hard boss kill to get it even though it was objectively ugly it would suddenly start to look good to you like because it was because so, it's so prestigious it's prestige it's like an ugly guy with a lot of money girls are gonna think he's attractive like <laughs> it like 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 they they just they will like they will look past that because they are so into uh the other the the other aspects of it. So if you get like this sword that looks terrible, but it's like the most prestigious sword in the game, you're gonna rock that sword even though it looks even though the skin's ugly as hell because it's got prestige and it's more important than than that. It'll it overcomes everything. Value will, will transcend looks and and supersede looks. Oh, I mean, I I don't, I don't know, man. Like I I in principle I do actually agree with you, but I find that in guild wars 2 it just makes me not care at all you know like i i i think i'm quite notorious for no just, prestige. just not there's caring no items have right? prestige that, that's true no items do it. But, if, but if there was like if if like some of the prestige items i would say like you could you could argue that legendary armor is is prestige right that there is like no way i would ever use the light legendary armor right because i i could i would <laughs> my eyes would bleed you know like it's it's not good i i you know i i, I couldn't deal with it um, I don't know. I I just the 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 cash shop is just like it's weird, right? Because like they they are in a really tough spot. If you've got microtransactions in a game, uh, that's the end the end game, like the progression of the game is about cosmetics, um, and then you need to sell stuff in the store to keep your game going. Then if you don't if you don't sell better stuff in the cash shop that's in the game, then then no one's gonna buy it, right? You know, like no one, no one's gonna buy that shit. Like they, they have to make it. They have to make the gem store stuff really competitive with the stuff in the game, if not better. Otherwise, no one would buy it because it's, it's you know, it's, it's gotta look good. It's gotta look good. How's the achievement armor? Lol? Loses two infusions and outfits. I actually, the achievement armor is actually a pretty cool thing. And like when I see someone in full achievement armor, I go, holy shit, this guy has absolutely no life and like a a, a, a mind of steel to enjoy all need? those achievements 35k ap yeah like 35k like uh, even like 38k or something like that i think for like the top for the top one i think you need 38k or something like that that's for the back piece too yeah 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 like yeah it's actually insane it's like it's a like, holy shit like, if, if you have that it's fucking crazy uh <laughs> 
actually insane. Oh, wait, 35 is for the back piece. 35k is for the back piece. Okay, well, there you go then. Yeah, and that is, that's pretty intense, you know? Oh, wait, 39k? No, 39k, apparently. I'm getting... People are giving me some misleading information here in the chat. Yeah, chat's conflicted. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the chat doesn't know. Like the chat has no idea. Uh, I, I don't want to just very briefly um uh, address something actually like about like the whole bragging rights thing i think like, calling it calling like, having better items than someone or like having more in a game than someone like calling it a uh, bragging rights is, is a little it's a little reductive i think um like, you would you wouldn't I, if you kind of apply this thing the same thing to say sports or something right um you, you wouldn't call being faster than someone or being able to lift more than someone else like bragging rights it's like it's like a prestige thing right it's not um it's not just like ego it's like you know like you've you've put the work in and the reward is having some capabilities and i know maybe it's you know the comparison between like say you know lifting weights and playing a video game is like maybe not the most valid comparison but i, I mean i kind of think it is right you know like people compete in both of those and make money on both of those right like it's not um it's not all about um it's not all about ego it's it's, it's about competition right uh and and being better you know and achieving things in anything that you do right it's not necessarily um, it's, it's not necessary about that. Even something like AP, like, yeah, it's true that saying like achievement points is not some like Omega, like galaxy brain, super skilled content. But you know what? I respect it, dude. Like when I see someone with like the full, um, radiant, I'm like, like holy shit. You know what? I'm going to give this man a round of applause because like, that is something I'll probably never do. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, why, that's why, that's why running is like an incredibly <laughs> stupid hobby because <laughs> There's like at every like 5k ra local race, there's three dudes who are super fast yep. and they're racing competitively against each other. Everyone else there is racing for personal bests, which is not, which is only competitive with yourself. It doesn't matter like what the person next to you does. It doesn't matter if you beat them or not. You don't care. All you're doing is trying to like per personal best. And that's like, that's just like so non-competitive. Like that's just your own sense of progression i guess which is fine but it it's hard to say that that's at all the same as almost any other sport where there's a winner and a loser um in and even like like swimming or cycling or or any or or rowing even on like an amateur level, there's a winner and a loser, like in every sort of contest. But running is like this weird thing where people don't even care about winning and losing. They just care about personal bests, which are completely irrelevant in every other sport besides weightlifting. Maybe people care about personal bests, but, mm. but competitive weightlifters, I don't think care about personal bests as much as they care about winning the meet. Yeah. I, I think it is kind of it is kind of both though. Like even with the sport like running, do you think? Like you know, well with all with all sports to a certain extent. If you know, if you're if you're just getting into a sport or something, right? Like you're kind of competing against yourself in a way. Like until you can actually start to properly compete with people, uh, maybe you know, you never will. Like maybe I mean, like so this is definitely the case in swimming, right? Like there are, there are certain um, you'll you'll go to a meet, right? And there are going to be some fucking beast guys there, right? You know, like you, you they'll, they'll be like. like so you can you can go to these these competitions and if they happen the to Michael be in their hometown, yeah, like and they'll lit they'll rock up right and they'll actually be swimming like times that are some of the best in the country. You're not going to beat them, but you know you're still going to try and do the best you can, right? Uh, and I I think it's the, tr the same is true in gaming, and and this is something that uh, I think this is kind of a uh, like a very very modern thing about like kind of hiding competition or saying like no 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 competition that that's bad, right? Um, uh, but because like, you know, when when you're when you're playing a game, you're like, oh, you know, this time I'm, I'm gonna do more DPS, right? I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna I'm gonna kill this guy one v one even quicker, right? I'm gonna beat that guy harder, right? You know, even faster. Like if you're playing an RTS game, you know, oh, I'm gonna have um, you know, higher actions per minute, right? In in this uh, in this round this time, like, I don't know, like that that's that's a reward in itself as well. That kind of funnels back into the kind of the reward system thing, right? Like it's um. Like competition, even so if it's just like with many... yourself, is really, really core to uh, being rewarded in anything you do, you know, is, is getting better, some kind of competition. How many swim participation trophies do you have, T5? Oh, I've got a hell of a lot. I've got some winning ones, <laughs> but I've got a lot of participation trophies, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can't stand. I When I was yeah. a kid, 
so I, I played I played football, American football, for many years yep. up into the college level. And I can remember as a kid getting a couple of plaques, a couple of trophies for being, you know, best this of the year. But like those meant something. But every year, everybody got a little trophy with a football oh, player. Yeah. That's good. And um, I can remember my my mom yelling at me because I would at the end of the season, I would take it. and I would throw the trophy out because everybody <laughs> got one. It didn't make any difference. <laughs> and she's like, no, that's. You need to keep the trophy. It's a signal of your accomplishment. And I said, all I accomplished was surviving the season. I, you know, I could have sat on the bench the entire season. It didn't matter. So, yeah, I, I don't have any of the participation trophies, but I do have some of the yeah. where I actually did something yeah. around still. Okay. Yeah. No, it, it's true. Like, if, if you know, is you know, as they as they say in the movies, guys, you know, if everyone's super, no one is. You know, like you, you can't it's participation trophies. Is trash and I, well, you know, I hate to bring up, you know, I hate to bring up the game. We should start banning the word Guild Wars Two in chat. But like, Guild, this is where Guild Wars Two does like fall down for a lot of the more competitive players. Is that, yeah, like, as the chat kind of rightly pointed out, like that there is no, there is no prestige like whatsoever um, because you know, you, you know, every everyone can kind of get everything, right? That's the whole point. And also, um, you can just buy almost everything like without actually getting it like it's, it's ironic that people are kind of shitting on ap like um arguably um yeah, there is there is one there is true there is one procedure item in the the monthly at which is like a very very good reward actually it's like the best reward in the game easily right um but yeah you know there you have it it's uh, it is a bit of a problem i'm not saying that a lot of other games do it much better like there, there are plenty of other like I, really frustrating systems like i mean, I, I in, a, in a way i would love to try out games like bdo and arcage but the games would piss me off because of the way the game rewards you and the way how does it reward you you try and upgrade a piece of gear oh by the way buddy it's like a 20 like percent chance that your gear breaks and you're fucked and you got to go all the way back down again not good right um or like it, honestly in, in world of warcraft classic this is very frustrating like your your you're kind of you're at the mercy of pure RNG as well. It's like, oh yeah, amazing. That, that's just that. Oh mm, yeah, it's so so good. That's very very juicy. And and I, I I'm not really overly complaining about any of these approaches because I think it's very very difficult. Um, it's very difficult to actually get this right because like, if you don't have some kind of RNG, then it do, you do kind of lose the prestige in a way because it's it's very difficult uh to maintain like high effort and rarity on stuff without literal rarity making it hard to get but i don't know like mmos are a really hard genre to get right i think in terms of the reward structures probably the hardest which is which is why i think um not uh you know you, you don't see one system that's gonna please everyone or a lot of people you know it's it's not good yeah and it it sort of goes back to like the different like games mean different things to different people. And there's a lot of people that games are escapism from the difficulties and challenges of their, their everyday life. And those people don't want to be challenged in a game. And that's a completely understandable and defensible position. Um, that's why they have Farmville. Yeah. And you understand it when <laughs> like you might go, well, I'm, I'm a competitive gamer and I, I don't understand that mindset, but I assure you there is something you enjoy that you don't, that you want to just passively consume and uh, uncritically and not be challenged on it. Uh, you don't want your, the music you listen to, to challenge you. You just want <laughs> to put it on and enjoy it. You know, you don't want to be challenged by music you listen yeah. to. It, is, it can't, like, it can't I mean, be difficult. There's a very tiny oh, percentage yeah. of people that do listen to like experimental Tool. Album. Yeah, people who listen to Tool, dude. Yeah, okay? because yeah. they want to be yeah. challenged by their by the music that they listen to. And okay, but that's like almost nobody. That's like that's why pop music is popular because it doesn't challenge you and most people don't want to be challenged by music. Um, but that also like applies to like books and TV and movies like there's a reason why movies with happy endings are, are more popular than movies with sad endings because they don't challenge you as much. And it, and it, it's the same thing in gaming where there's people that don't want to be challenged and they don't, they, their, their life is hard enough. And I've in certain games, I do feel that way. Like if I'm playing a platformer and I, and I die trying like a jump or something. Okay. 
If I die a second time, okay, this this is all right, starting to not be fun. And if I die a third time, I'm probably quitting the game <laughs> because I don't want to be. Cha- I've I've been challenged the to- the two times I died, and I don't want to be challenged anymore by this. That sounds by a lot like challenge. Rex and Sab. Yeah, I want to be challenged. Yeah, I don't want to play Rage Sab. Quit. Dude, it's terrible. Well, <laughs> you don't you don't like super adventure books? No, I hate it. I I went in there the day it launched, way back in the day, and never set foot in there again afterwards. Man. Yeah, I was mad because I was like, "Why can't we have new dungeons? Yeah, why are we getting this? <laughs> why are they adding this fucking dumb jumping puzzle side game that took a lot of development effort when the game has like the same fractals and dungeons since launch that like n- that need new content?" Yeah, oh like man, it, 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 I, I just resented it because it was like taking it. It felt like it was taking away, and and I know Guild Wars Two development doesn't work like that, where it's not like well them focusing on one thing doesn't mean they're taking it from another. They would have just not done the other. They would have done neither. But at the time, it did, It definitely felt like it's like, well, they haven't done any new dungeons and they haven't added any new fractals. So why? Are, and, and all they're adding is SAB. Like, this is stupid. Like, it made me mad. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, that's uh, that's, a, that's an interesting one because I, I feel uh, exactly the opposite, actually, like, funnily enough. Um, because yeah, I really liked, like, like I, I wish I could go back and do SAB while, while not knowing, you know, I, 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 by, while not knowing, um, about, uh, any of the roots and stuff like that, like playing through it for the first time and actually figuring it out, like, uh, without a guide, I, I actually really enjoyed, you know, it's like, you kind of, without you, taco. Yeah. Without taco. Do, 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 Inks, you think I, I use that shit? Okay, like one of the reasons why, and, and and I guess everyone disagrees with me on this because taco is really popular. I hate stuff like guides, and I I don't like guides. I don't like taco. Hundred percent right? agree. Because what's the point if you're not gonna you know do the big brain right? Like, and I I know most people disagree with me on this because most people use this you know this kind of tool. They they use stuff like um you know Dolphy um and 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 taco, and that's great. Like, you know I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge you for that, but I am going to say that I think you're kind of... Um, I judge you. you. I judge oh, you. Oh, yeah, you do? Okay. <laughs> yeah. The, the way I see it is that people are kind of ruining the experience for themselves. You know? It's like it's like... It's like skipping to the end of a movie and watching the ending, and then watching the you know you you just watch the ending immediately, right? You just or you like read through the plot on Wikipedia. It's like why would you do that? I mean, could did you do the entire Sky Scale collection without looking at a single guide? To yeah, where the things were hidden. Yeah, dude, we did yeah, we like, did because the guide didn't exist. Like we we, we did it. like four different yeah. press F <laughs> collections, and they're all like well hidden, like. <laughs> that would have taken like years. Well, I don't so I don't understand. So the, the, was the egg one the egg one was the most annoying, but by then you've been around the map fifty fucking times. You kinda know where these things are sort of anyway. Like I did it without a guide. It was su- it took me like weeks because I didn't use a guide, but I got it done. Now the second time I did it to to help my wife, I used guides. I'm I'm not going through that again. Forget that. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, you know, I, and it wasn't fun. Like very, like we had, I had the no. way we did it. It was like I had a will because I was doing it like on the day when when it was happening. Like we just did it whenever it reset, and we would just you know do it on stream. Uh, we did. I had a, like a team of people helping me find the eggs, and we were able to find the eggs pretty okay ish. And um, some of the other really annoying parts of the collection. And yeah, it it, it wasn't fun. Um, but I think I would have actually got more triggered using a guide right because it's like I, I like holy shit like when is this going to be over right at least when we were searching for it we were actually all searching for it and kind of engaging with it a little bit um but if you're on a guide i feel so when, when i'm when if you use a guide i think you're just so disengaged from the content that it feels even more like a chore and it's even less enjoyable and less memorable because i'll tell you what right um i will never forget the sky scale collection right okay ever because of how horrific it was. I, I it was I had <laughs> nightmares about those fucking eggs, dude, around the map. I, it, you know, the first one I didn't yeah. mind. Like doing a doing a, a press F collection once I'm okay with. The fact that I had to do it three times <laughs> in the same map is where I started to get triggered. I started yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah freaking out. Like, yeah, like yeah. when is this going to like you said, when is this going to be over? How many times <laughs> do I have to go around this stupid map to find an item and press F on it? Yeah. It was good, you know, just keep doing it. 
Let's collect those eggs. It's uh, the the press F is well. You know, this is another thing I have about with reward structures in games, right? Okay, and and this is a big thing. This is a big meme, boys. Okay, this is a, a mega meme. Right? Listen up, guys. Okay, and listen up, game devs. If you're gonna try and do a reward, okay, you should actually make it so you have to play the game. Now, I'm I'm pretty sure that. A lot of this is like a Guild Wars 2 specific criticism, actually. Uh, I'm pretty sure most games aren't as bad as Guild Wars 2 at doing this. But the Guild Wars 2 developers seem genuinely afraid to put any kind of reward in Guild Wars 2 behind actually playing the game, right? Okay? Like, you, you could... Uh, uh, could could you actually do the Sky Skull collection without even like, using one ability? Like, you probably could, right? Like, I, I'm pretty... Most of it, anyway. Almost all of it you could do without even playing the game, right? That is horrifying. That's not good. That, that is that's a, a true it's, it's mark of, of horror, right? Like, why are we not playing the game while you're doing this? It, it's, well, it's not good. That was sort of what I was going at on the one, like, tweet chain that I did about the, the, the progression curve of the sky scale, mm. where what the collection should have been is you immediately when you talk to Gorik or whatever the guy's name is, you get your sky scale right at the start. You get the mount right at the beginning, and the collection is to power the mount up. And so it starts out as like kind of like a weak, useless mount. And the first press F collection are all things that you have to use, kind of like its gliding ability. Like it, it can't hold, it can't hover. It can only like lose altitude. Well, the first collection is you like gliding to things and pressing F and then after you complete it, now your guy can hover and you can move horizontally without losing altitude. So the second collection requires you to get things that you can only get to by moving horizontally. Then the, the, you finish that collection and your sky skill gets upgraded to be able to gain altitude. So now you, the, the third collection is all things that require you to gain altitude to get to. And that would feel like progression as you like made your sky scale more powerful and more awesome. And it would make like you make you feel as you finished each press F collection that you were at least becoming more powerful and the sky scale was becoming more useful and it would feel great. You'd finish each collection and go, yes, this feels good. And that would just be a 10 times better way to present that reward to you. And it would have been better for Anet financially. Yeah. Because I am 100% sure there's a very large amount of players who have not unlocked the sky scale and will not unlock the sky scale. And as a result, have not bought any sky scale oh. mount skins and will not buy any sky scale mount skins. But if everybody got the sky scale right at the start and maybe some people were too casual to finish all four collections, so they have kind of like a gimped sky scale. They would probably still buy the sky scale skin if it was cool enough for their gimped sky scale guaranteed yeah so they really missed the boat by not giving everyone the sky scale early in the collection and doing it that way yeah no i i completely agree like the, and that idea um that you were talking Legendary about Armor is... got it right by the way with the precursor they gave, you, yeah. they gave you precursor armor after completing the first of three collections so you at least were like, okay, I got this ascended armor. It's cool. It's 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 just it's just ascended armor, but at least it's functional. And you're like, wow, well, it feels like progression. It feels like progress. So mm. they, did, they did it right with that by giving you incremental rewards rather than all the reward at the end. I think they really had the the right idea with the legendary weapons as well, right? Like the 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 Gen two ones, like where you had to go on like a proper quest chain and and do some cool quests. Um, to to generate that weapon and you would slowly upgrade it and eventually it will become legendary after a you know, really, really long uh, adventure that's going to drain your wallet into oblivion. Uh, they, they had the good idea with that. And, and you know what's funny is that the some of the rarest legendaries you'll find are like the Gen 2 ones that actually require questing, right? But and because people just don't do them, like, and and so you do have that bit of prestige. Like I, like, it used to be like this even um, in in the original, with the original Gen 1 ones actually, like the first legendary I crafted was the Bifrost, right? And when I crafted it, I crafted it pretty early on actually. I played the game quite a lot and made a lot of gold pretty quickly. 
Um, and this is when it wasn't really that feasible for most people to buy legendaries, whereas now it's pretty feasible for everyone to buy legendaries. And like, when, when I got that fucking legendary stuff, I was like, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Like, this is, this is good. Right? Because I actually, you know, you stand out. You stand out from the crowd once you have that. Um, and that's why I think, you know, kind of putting things for people to leap over is actually a really good thing. Like, because, it, you know, it makes you, makes you have, have a little bit of swag. You know, a little bit of swag. Yeah, Chuka and Chompa was good. You know, get those tigers. You know, then you kill the tigers. It's you know, it's like you know, it's not exactly eco-friendly, but you know, it's you know, it's, it's okay, right? It's gonna it's gonna be okay, and it, and it generates memorable moments as well. Like I I can't remember when you know, like when I was like crafting Eureka, the legendary mace, where I AFK'd in Lion's Arch for like a, for an hour or so while I was crafting stuff. But I can definitely remember. Like um, you know, going through the journey and and uh, making Chuka and Chompawat, right? You know, like I have I have memory of this uh, as well. Yeah, but yeah, it's it, it generates memorable and rewarding experiences for the player, not just like literally in the game, uh, but also you know in 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 the player's mind, right? You know, they can be rewarded there too as well. You know, and that that feels pretty good. You know, it does feel pretty good. Uh, with re with regards to the reward structures in the game as well, so that's it's important. But yeah, incremental rewards, as you say, Nike, are, are really really key. Like having it uh, front loaded or back loaded is is not good, right? It it really isn't. It's so important to have like it, it, that goes back into the first idea we were discussing, right? which is the idea of progression, like the whole progression thing. It's important to have that even in your progression. You want little micro progressions as you're going along as well, just to kind of keep you. Uh, keep you happy with what's going on like you know everything needs to be a reward track it just needs everything needs to be a reward track there's got to be a lot of steps on the way uh to getting stuff right um and that's you know it makes it feel good like you know you well you're literally making progress i, I think the you know it, people kind of mocked this system like with the you know when they reworked the precursor quests uh and you know the first attempt at making a precursor for a gen one legendary is like a burnt up like horrible this piece of trash right it's it's, a, it, it's it's like a stick right it's like ben it, it's horrible you you would never use the skin uh, but then next time it's a little bit better right and then after that you get the actual precursor and then you can make your legendary after that like that was it was actually a, a really good idea um a literal piece of trash yeah yeah no it is, it is. <laughs> i Look, love it yeah have you have you seen like the skin for um yeah, spark yeah, yeah. like the first spark it's like here's one. a burnt stick yeah yeah it's benson <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the the trouble is, is that like, they I don't think they were executed that particularly well in in Guild Wars Two, but still, you know, like the the um the thought was there, and the effort was there. You know that 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 feels pretty good. Yeah, it, it does feel pretty good. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh boy. Yeah, there you go. Do you have anything else to say about rewards, like gaming gaming rewards? Like, what what makes uh what makes Path of Exile rewarding, Nike? Like, why is that game good? Because there is virtually unlimited vertical progression that you can get. And it gets to an astronomical level of cost to where most players... And, and what's funny is, like, let's say the hardest content in the game requires a build that is, like, 5 out of 10 in terms of power to finish, yet people still want that 10 out of 10, like epic level like uh they would the term is gg gear uh like just like best in slot everything people still want that even though it's completely not necessary um but yeah it's just limitless vertical progression like so i'll put it this way they're like one of the main currencies in the game is an exalted orb which are rare enough that if you just played the game non-stop for eight hours you might get two of them to drop every eight hours. And there are items that are so valuable, like weapons and armor pieces and stuff that are so valuable that you, even if you had a near unlimited amount of exalted orbs, no one would sell them to you. You'd have, to, they, but there's another item that can make a copy of an item and people will let you copy their best in slot item Rat, but they won't sell it to you. No one, like no one, would ever sell a best in slot item, and it's and and if you did try to like actually just buy one from someone, it would be thousands of of exalted orbs. So if you figure eight hours per exalted orb, and the best in slot uh, bow, for example, is I don't know 
six thousand exalted orbs. Like, think about how much time <laughs> that is. <laughs> okay. Like, that's insane. It's insane. That, that is it's completely insane. insane. Yeah. So, like, they're not realistic for even like a hardcore player. Like, I will never have an item that good. Like, like my the character I'm playing now is like a bow character. And my bow is better than 99% of bows in the game, but it only costs like seven exalted orbs. But there are bows out there that cost 7,000 exalted orbs. So it's just absolutely insane. Like that, that, that exists. And it gives people that want to go hardcore something to achieve. Um, and, and that's really it. Uh, but the uh, but I mean how would, how do you obtain such a bow in the um, first place? Like how... there's, the game is all about crafting, um, like and there's a very strong RNG element to crafting, and there's ways to do it more deterministically to like limit like your choices, like because there's like a thing called a chaos orb, which is a currency that will just randomly re-roll your gear with completely random like randomized stats, just shuffling rolling the dice. But there's other currencies like fossils that are like rolling the dice, just like a chaos orb, but they only will roll say twos and threes. So if you want a weapon that has a lot of twos and threes, you would roll fossils instead and get that particular thing. So you can do it more and you can, you can do things more deterministically, but there will still always be an RNG element. Um, and there's a, a thing called uh, like, and there's a, there's a very deterministic way of doing something called meta crafting, which I won't get into it, but it can cost like a thousand exalted orbs to meta craft uh, like an end game item. But the guys who do it and the guys who get, who invest into getting those things, they make a profit on it because they let people make copies of it for a fee. So to make a copy requires an item called a mirror. And so what they'll do is they'll say, okay, you give me a mirror and 30 exalted orbs and I'll give you back a copy of my best in slot item. And so basically you're, you, they profit 30 exalted orbs every time they make a copy. Ooh. And so they will make like, if it, if it is indeed the best in slot item in the game, they will make a hundred copies over the course of, of like three months. And that, and they'll make a profit on the crafting. So it's just one of those things where the people that invest early and get the best items early will make a lot of copies and therefore make a lot of, make a lot of money. Whereas there's other people that are like consumers that will just hemorrhage a lot of money. Just like real life, huh? Oh you yeah. Know, the man's in charge. It mirrors the game. The game mirrors life, I suppose. Wow. Well, that yeah, and, and it requires you to, to, like I was saying earlier, master the economy. Like, you really have to, to get to that level of wealth, you can't get that level of wealth just by playing the game. It's impossible. Like, uh, like the mirror item that allows you to make a copy, uh, there's people that have played 10,000 hours and have never gotten one. So, so it's a really good fuck? game for those who like playing economies. Yes, like you cannot <laughs> like there's a certain level of of wealth that you can't get without playing the economy. Like you have to understand how to profitably make every transaction. Like do every you have to be profiting off everything. Yeah. So So a lot of this stuff isn't really farmable then, not realistically. Like you, you Yeah, can... like you could play 14 hours a day and you're and at the end of a month, the character that you're playing on, if you added up all the value of his gear, might be like 30 exalteds, 50 exalteds. And that would be considered a very well-geared character. But 50 exalteds isn't even enough for the fee to copy some of these items. So it's just, just you're, like what you get from playing the game is, no, is not enough to have truly best in slot items. And the funny thing is like 99% of players they don't even that, that's so astronomically far out of their reach that that's not even part of the game for them essentially like a best in slot like a reddit worthy item where people share the items they crafted on reddit that are like amazing like that that's just so unrealistic for the average player like they don't even care about that because it's just not something that they'll ever get 
like the level it, it just gets to an insane level that they like couldn't fathom so they don't even try yeah yeah i mean that that is pretty intense but i mean it does seem to be working out very well for part of exile though because like the the developer they even did a talk didn't they about like designing a game to be almost like future-proofed right that it will just be able to sustain itself kind of just going on forever and ever and ever right with with that and what well, the game's business model it's not very aggressive at all is it Either. it's very aggressive oh it's very aggressive <laughs> it's free to play it's completely free to play but the microtransactions are extremely expensive uh oh well what do you what, um, what can you get with the microtransactions so there's like the things that are most important thankfully are cheap and that's like your storage uh like expanding like your bank the, because the game is so economic based you need a lot of bank space to like keep items that you want to sell um and to craft with and stuff and luckily the bank stuff is cheap like like another bank slot is like a dollar 50 like it's not that onerous but if you want like wings for your character with particle effects <laughs> oh boy oh boy now you're looking at there's there's like a set of wings that just came out that's 45 dollars what the fuck yeah that's crazy. So, <laughs> Like, that's crazy and and like Ooh, a full set of armor out. like with particle effects and stuff on the cash shop is like 42 dollars, and that doesn't include the wings so like and then that also doesn't include like the particle effect in your weapon that matches the armor that's also extra so if you wanted like a fully kitted out like fiery themed character with fiery wings fiery armor and fiery swords you're probably going to spend 150 bucks on microtransactions but the overwhelming majority of players do not do that. They play with like the ugliest in-game skins imaginable. Like they don't care about their cosmetics at all. It's it like the cosmetics for them are like they're they're not like like only like rich IRL rich people care about the cosmetics. The average player does not. Yeah. I mean, that is that is a fair way to do it. Like, especially when the actual main progression of the game, I, this is a, this is a really good thing about it. Even though that sounds, you know, a little bit spicy, the old forty-five dollar wings. Uh, however, like the actual progression system of the game is completely separated from the cash shop, so I just don't think anyone cares, right? I, I don't think I, I would. Yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't it, care it, at all. You don't need any. Like the only thing on the cash shop you you need is is more bank storage. I think, and I think you could get enough bank storage for. Fifteen dollars to give you more than you would ever need for like ever, and and even and that's as like a power trader. Like fifteen dollars would be enough bank space. Like someone who's like mastering the economy could do it for fifteen dollars of bank space. But the but if you want to look shiny, you're paying. Like it's it's hardcore mm. in terms of that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's okay though. Like I I don't mind paying for account upgrades. Like. I think a lot of the purchases that I have felt the least dirty about in Guild Wars 2 are about like, bought, you know, it's funny actually, like this, 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 this is very wrong for me to say, but like the, I feel, I don't feel bad at all about buying like the borderline, well, not, not the pay to win stuff, but you know, like the pay to win stuff in Guild Wars 2, like getting that copper fed salvage amount, it's like, oh yes. Okay. That, that's, oh, that's, that's money well spent, you know, even though that's like, that's way more egregious than something like an outfit, right? An outfit is like, you know, ah, oh, look, I'm, I'm so pretty now I can run around in a cod piece. Right. But the copper fed salvage amount is saying that if you don't have that, your gameplay experience is bad right like it's not good right you you i mean i can't even ima I, I can't even imagine playing the game without maxed out inventory slots in guild wars 2 and then maxed at, like with all the like all the convenience items i have now like the game would be unplayable to me actually like without this stuff if i didn't have my permanent trading post permanent uh, bank permanent um like all this fucking shit and to be fair that's not cash shop that's you know you can buy yeah, that's, that's gold in game right? like uh, ultra it's, luxury items. yeah ultra luxury items like the game would be so horrible i i would quit i would uninstall without those items actually yeah honestly the permanent yeah. bank contract might <laughs> oh. be the most prestigious item in yeah. Guild wars 2. it's fucking god like mode, if you dude. have that i mean yeah granted i got lucky and bought them when they were like 300 gold each mm. like like so it wasn't like that huge a deal but like those are the most ultimate prestige items like permanent bank permanent oh. merchant and permanent trading post yes. like if you have those three like that's a sign that like you've like got some prestige with your account like that's that's end game in guild wars 2 
Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, it is. And I don't, I don't mind. So I don't mind paying or something like that um, at all, actually. Like, even if, even if you could actually buy like the permanent bank, I don't think I would really mind if you could just buy that. Like that's, that it kind of feels okay. I don't mind account upgrades at all, actually. Um, as long as they're not like openly pay to win. Like, but I think the, the actual bar to make something pay to win is very high, actually. You know, like, the way I see pay to win is that, uh, you know, you can get something in the store that you can't obtain outside, you know, in the game, right? So if there was like mega ascended gear and the only way you could get mega ascended gear was with cash only. And, and honestly, Guild Wars 2 is in such a such a sweet spot for this because it's actually impossible to call anything about the game pay to win because you can buy anything, right, on the gem store with gold. You just have to play the game a lot, right? Like suppose that there actually was mega ascended gear in the game, right? Um, like you could still, in theory, just grind for it. Like you convert, could convert, yeah, yeah, convert yeah. all the gems and yeah, then yeah. buy it. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it does. Get, it's a very difficult thing to talk about because, I, as I understand, like I still I need to get someone on who's played BDO. I need to get Envy on here to be honest at some point because I have heard very conflicting things about if BDO is actually pay to win or not. Uh, because Frosty told me because he's played BDO that you can, in theory, obtain all of the stuff um that you would you know you would you'd kind of pay to win for right in theory you could just play the game a lot right and you'd eventually be able to get it but i think it does depend how realistic it is like if it's really unrealistic to do it without putting in any money um then without it then then yeah that's fucking pay to win right like if, if you know if you've got to spend like a grand uh just to get this item or you have to like grind for ten thousand hours then yeah okay that's probably a pay to win you know that's that's, that's pretty pay to win you know, with with that but i i, I actually don't know because i'm what if, um, I, people always like argue, you. you know <laughs> yeah go what ahead. if um fractal god could be purchased for gems Ooh. like because that gives you a very tangible in-game DPS yeah. boost, yeah. having that. And it's an insane time gate to oh. get in-game. What if you could pay 150 bucks and get Fractal God from the gem store? Yeah. Th this it, People would freak out at yeah. the price point. They it, wouldn't even think about yeah. devaluing Fractal God. They would just be like, $150 arena net, are you crazy? Dude, fucking Deroy Gaming in the chat, boys. Yeah, it, Dora would cry. D Dora I mean, it would be a bad yeah. sign for the game if they were doing oh, that. Yeah. But yeah, it wouldn't. Like you said, it wouldn't even necessarily be pay to win because mm. you can convert gold. You could get Fractal God by grinding silver wastes. <laughs> yeah. Like, like really. <laughs> Oh, it's such a I, it's such a difficult issue. Like I, I would have to say that in that case, that would it would be pay to win, right? It's got to be pay to win there, right? Because. Um, I mean, pay to win but, would be like if you get a better fractal god, yeah, that, like better than what you could get it, from actually fractaling. It makes it so much it, like it just being able to skip all of that in-game stuff by paying. Oh, it's such a difficult topic because on the other hand, it's not pay to win because of course you can just get it right. You can just get it in the game right just by by playing. But it is such a long time game. I mean, how long does fractal god actually take to get? It's like a year of like playing fractals. Like you, you can imagine being able to, you know, pay. Uh, you know, get that just by by buying a bunch of gems or stuff. That would be like, come on, you, you, we can't do that. We can't have yeah. that in the game, Thank, guys. Thankfully, Inet is not that greedy for yeah. cash. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, love Cat that cash. brings up a good point. What exactly, what exactly do you win by buying Fractal God? 7% more DPS oh, yeah. or, Big or DPS. Whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it, it does. does. Oh, yeah, it fucking matters. Dude. If they sold infusions on the cash shop that were, instead of plus five stats, plus 15 stats, like in China, I would buy them. Dude, like, like that—that that would be all my characters. To to me, that is like strict pay to win. Like that's that's um. I think there's a lot of gray area on pay to win, but like that sort of thing is strict pay to win, right? If you can buy something in the game, uh, in the gem store, right, or in the no, I, I won't say this about Guild so I don't want to confuse people. If you could buy something in a cash shop that is strictly better than anything else you can get in the game, like that's like blatant pay to win, right? But even in Guild Wars Two, like the the horrible part about that. Right? Is that it? Kind of wouldn't be pay to win because you could just buy it with gems, right? You know, well, like of it's, course. It's, oh, and it could also come up with like elite gems that oh, were like not yes. for for gold, yeah. and you could only get. They only went one. That you could only change them for gold. You couldn't change gold for them. Be like next level gems that are like polished gems. And, yeah, I, I and think like, I think the only way Guild Wars Two could end up being pay to win is if.
it was like you had to keep upgrading the infusion so you could you, you started out as like a plus 10 power and you could keep buying more gems and it could go up to like infinite like it wouldn't yeah, be yeah. it wouldn't be realistic so you were right? one tapping people in yeah, yeah, yeah. anti yeah. nomads gear in yeah, world, yeah. Yeah. world like just like plop hit you for 30k even can in I my just full pay, nomads uh, good luck beating me can i just yeah. pay team usa to win oh yeah you can oh you can do that Awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you you can do that. Like that's 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 saying that they can they can sort out for you. You know, like, you need that monthly AT inks. Like not a problem. God of PvP, easy. You know, like, easy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a problem there. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, Guild Wars, they got their big brains. They're in a galaxy brains. Like because of the the cash up exchange thing, like, you could play everything. Like the only things that could be considered pay to win. And this is why this is such a difficult topic. I, I'd love to have like proper debates and discussions on. I could talk for hours on this. Actually, we should talk for hours on this. Maybe not today, but another time actually. Because um, I'm sure some of you guys probably know Bix a snake, right? Is anyone here in the chat know Bix a snake? Who? Uh, who? Uh, who? Who? Who the snake? Uh, Beluga, Beluga pod. Beluga pod. Sure you know, you know he's better known Beluga as that. Pod. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Beluga okay. pod. Right. Okay. Now, Vic says that the expansions are pay to win, right? <laughs> because you know you can't if, unless you. <laughs> because look, with that, if you can't, if you don't have Path of Fire, then you can't do the Path of Fire raids. You know. And you can't do, you can't play Scourge in PvP. Well, I mean, that would be pay to lose at this point, but, you know, still, you can't play Mirage in Guild Wars 2 PvP. Therefore, it's pay to win. Like, these casters are fucking pay to win, dude. Easy. Well, I just think it's pay to play, is how I would look but at there it. But like, there are core competitive builds, though, for PvP. Uh, yeah, there weren't. Um, it, this is less relevant uh, now than it was. But, like, for example, um, during Heart of Thorns. At uh, the very start of Heart of Thorns, like every build was HOT spec. And actually, if you want to go that route, you can even you can look at World of Warcraft and say, well, if you don't buy the expansions in WoW, <laughs> it's pay to win. You don't. You yeah, 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 like yeah. That's, that's, game but yeah, he, like, you know, he does say every that. Every game. Yeah. 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 Some people, some people do say that, and it's really the confusing. problem is like once you have like a word like pay to or a phrase like pay to win. And the definition is so broad that it encompasses literally every game ever made. Mm. It doesn't mean anything anymore. It just means a game. Yeah. Like it, like when you say pay to win, you're just talking about every game. So when you say pay to win, you're just saying a game. It doesn't mean anything. Yeah. I, th I think that's why it's such a difficult topic to talk about, actually. Because like, whenever, um, whenever, I, whenever I have discussions about it on stream with almost anyone, it always gets into like a, almost like a subjective definition. Like, that not anyone's set definition of pay to win really kind of means anything really you know it's any um, game that you have to pay for is pay to win is pay to win because <laughs> you can't win unless you buy the what game kind of, what that's, kind of shit logic is yeah, that <laughs> that's, that's bullshit uh, that's ridiculous yeah it's, it's it's a very difficult um a difficult concept to talk about but yeah, I, don't, I don't know how exactly how we got here but you know the pay to win thing is 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 a fun one actually because like i'm just not sure uh about some of these games that they actually are pay to win or not if, or if they just inconvenience you to the point that you you know you have to kind of have you kind of have to pay because i think like i i i honestly when i whenever i talk about a game i always thought you know what i should play this game because everyone disagrees like um i heard similar things about eso as well right like some people say eso if you don't buy the premium you're gimped. You can barely play the game, and then other people say it's fine, right? It's uh, well, it's, it's very so unusual. You can, in ESO, you can you don't need to pay the monthly thing, although it's very beneficial if you do, because the storage space um, that you have in the game is is especially at the at the early game is super limited. So you're constantly running back to the bank to deposit, and you can only deposit so much anyway. If you pay their monthly fee you get the quality of life that Guild Wars 2 has where you can store unlimited whatever. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, I'm I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about all this sort of thing actually. Like with with everyone's kind of quest for free to play uh and that sort of thing. I, I don't know. I, I think you you end up people you find developers start designing their game deliberately badly, right? In order to make sure that, you know, like build templates. Well, ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that's controversial yeah that is a hot take what do you think about um what do you think about uh i think things? they're amazing yeah for 
the everyday player who will never need to buy into the system. Okay. Uh, I think for anybody who uses, what is it called? The, uh, what is the add-on called currently? Arc DPS. Arc DPS. Arc DP- yeah. If you use Arc DPS, uh, then it's terrible. <laughs> if you play a Chronomancer in PVE raids, then it's terrible because you'll have 50 variations of, you know, this, that, or the other. Um, I I would say, you know, first of all, I always expected build templates to be monetized. So monetizing it doesn't surprise me at all. It surprises me a little bit, and I have to take my, my hat is off to ArenaNet on designing it in such a way that they can triple monetize oh it. Oh my I mean, god, Inks is going in, uh, boys. I, well, hey, look, I got <laughs> nothing against I got nothing against ArenaNet, but it was literally designed to monetize it as best <laughs> as possible. Like, you got to pay for this. You got to pay for the account ones. You got to pay for the the storage. And then, of course, there's limits on how much you can even buy because the uh, they've they've hit a limitation or something with their. With their code, with their game, whatever. That's weird. Is, right? An engine issue, limitation in Guild Wars Two. I mean, no, yeah, no way. That's hard to believe. But eventually, but eventually they'll overcome that limit, and then there'll be a new limit, and you'll be able to buy some extra ones, right? It's just a matter of how much time and effort they put into overcoming it. Because what was the quote they said? Like the code gets wonky after a certain level or whatever. I don't remember the direct quote, but they they had a quote about the the code gets crazy or something after a certain level and that's why you can only buy 24 and you can only buy six of this and six of that and blah 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 so i mean eventually they'll overcome those things just like they did with account storage you know first it was 250 now it's like 2k um but what sucks is for what what really sucks kind of is if you are what guild wars 2 wants you to be and that's the player who plays all the game modes Minus structured PvP because that's going to come in separately, I guess. But you got one build for World vs. World, you got one build for PvE, and then you'll have an extra build. Uh, and then if you want to extend that to six, sure, that's fine, right? But it it is limited, I think, for high end individuals, Teapot, Nike, some of the guys from Lucky Noobs. I was talking with this about where they had and Deroyer. Like I know he's got like eight builds for this and nine builds for that. Um, it's going to suck for those people. It really is. And I, I kind of wish ArenaNet would allow... I kind of wish they would allow Arc DPS to continue for some time until they can work out the bugs and the limitations and stuff like that. I think that would be the best approach for ArenaNet, PR-wise. Um, but the truth is, 99% of the players in Guild Wars 2 don't even need build templates, or they'll rarely use them. Or if they do use them because content creators like Wooden Potatoes and Nike start pushing these open world builds that they might latch on to, then maybe they use one or two builds. But the truth is most people pick one build, even myself, people pick one build and that's the build they play. You know, they, they don't really switch that often. They have a character just for World vs. World. They have a character just for raids, just for fractals, you know. Um, and, and that's not the most elegant solution. And like I said, ArenaNet really capitalized on monetizing the living hell out of this thing uh every way they possibly could um the biggest disappointment for me and i don't plan to use the system a whole lot i I really don't plan to buy into it too much but the biggest disappointment is how many gear slots you're gonna have because if you're gonna change something in a build changing your gear around and stat selecting your gear and stuff is the biggest quality of life annoyance kind of thing right it's probably the only thing that's left that's re- yeah really annoying in the game. I, it's uh yeah, and uh, well, I, I don't know. I, I the, the system is good. I, we we probably shouldn't go into this this uh this too much, but yeah, like the, the system is good. But yeah, I mean, if if you look at it even with like a tiny tinge of cynicism, it's very of it's very easy to assume that they did this to just to make as much money as possible, right? Um, like seeing as we're on the topic of that, like that there's a lot of ways they could have done this that would have been simpler i mean they could have literally just like ripped off arc right um and then they yeah it would it would have been a lot you know it might have worked out a little bit better like i think that the real thing that they did that caused this to be really awkward and they kind of had to monetize it this aggressively is because they decided to invent the armory right um where you can store extra gear like this is why they won't give you infinite of them because then you've got infinite bag space right this is why they're gonna have to charge you for it because it's like an insane 
quality of life. Like, it, I don't know. Like, the, the way I see it is, like, the way I choose to look at it is, like, they, they were trying to do this really convenient feature for everyone, and they just didn't really think about the actual use case for this. Um, and it was kind of innocent. It was, like, an innocent clown fiesta. But, yeah, it's very easy to see it as, like, oh, yeah, um, like, we did it this way, uh, because we made it so convenient that we have to charge money for it. We can't let you have this for free. Think how good it would be. Think how ridiculous it would be. Imagine if you had infinite bag space. That would be insane. We can't let you have that. That would be ridiculous. Um, you know, it's, and again, it is a very, it's a very fine line between, um, you know, they're, they're, they're adding convenience to the game and making the game complicated and inconvenient just to make money out of you um but yeah that's uh, the the build the everything is controversial. Seems, it seems convoluted to me the the whole system um that being said i look forward to it coming to the game at the end of the month and i'm gonna use it yeah. minorly you know i mean i'll you know i don't really change builds that often i, I play ranger so i've got druid and dps i mean <laughs> that's, that's all i need <laughs> I'm uh I'm optimistic. I think the system is going to be good. It's going to be much more elegant than Arc. Mm. And I know like being able to swap builds with hotkeys is going to be like very very good feeling. And it's not like Arc where there's like even in the aerodrome where there's like a 5 second delay between when you switch the build and when it's equipped like it's literally instant. And having that on hotkeys is pretty cool. So I think from a feel perspective, it's going to feel the, the templates are going to feel really, really good. And you're going to be like, damn, I wish we could have arc with this feel right. Like that will be what people will say. Um, but I don't want to like dwell on the negatives too much because I think a lot of the complaints about it are kind of overblown and exaggerated. Uh, the whole people with, with 18 different chrono builds, like, yeah, sure, you have 18 different chrono build templates, but I don't think you really need that many. I think you could probably get by with four and then change one trait here or there, one piece of gear here or there manually, and that would suffice to allow you to have all 18 builds at very easily. So I, I don't know. I, I think like a, I think that's a little bit of like people like looking for something to be mad about rather than being genuinely yeah. mad and and i'd wait to see how it was in practice before i made like and maybe it will be you have 18 builds and it sucks and it feels bad and it does feel bad okay well i would complain then rather than now because the thing that i don't like and i think is a big mistake for people to make is making over the top whining reddit posts about a feature that they haven't actually touched yet because they might look really stupid when the feature comes out and like is really good. And then you'll go back and you'll look at these Reddit posts and it'll be people like threatening to quit the game and crying about something that turned out to be great. Like I, I feel like that just sets you up to look kind of foolish and maybe it will suck and maybe they will be validated, but there's being like cautiously optimistic in this case is a win, win, uh, position to take, and I don't think there's really any other justifiable position. Yeah, I I actually completely agree with that. And like, you can take it from me, guys. Actually, this is this is not just about build templates, but this is about gaming in general. Actually, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go far here, guys. I think this should be. Uh, well, I'm not gonna say should, but uh, I find that my current approach of basically cautious optimism towards basically everything, it actually makes it a lot more. Um, a lot more enjoyable to actually play the game. Like I, I used to be where a lot of you guys are right now with regards to Guild Wars 2. Kind of like a doomer, right? Okay? Like a gloomer, if you will. Right? Uh, but you've gotta at some point you've gotta you gotta take a step back and and kind of just enjoy the fireworks to a certain extent, you know. Like if if you if you go too big on this, uh, it, it's gonna it's gonna make you sad, right? It's, you're just setting yourself up a dis even more disappointment. It's, it's weird actually. Like being cautiously optimistic and not stressing out about it too much like it, it yeah it actually disappoints you less and you can be pleasantly surprised as well like i was cautiously optimistic about like the new um the new living story that was coming out the, the prologue and i was actually very presently surprised right you know 
I was pretty I was good. expecting it to be when when they said prologue, right. I wasn't expecting it to be basically an episode. Yeah. And it was basically an episode. I mean, they they could have called it episode one and it, and people would have been like, okay, it's an episode. Mm. Um, I, when they said prologue, my thought was like, it's going to be like one crappy little instance and then like a map that's like a third to like a quarter the size of a normal map, like like a lobby almost. Yeah. But it turned out to be much more than that. So like I was pleasantly surprised that uh, a prologue was so so uh good which unfortunately now makes like when they come out with episode one my, my expectations are going to be that much higher so i guess that's i guess i'm set up for disaster now but whatever no uh, i i mean yeah i do think that the people do have a tendency to over focus on the negative but I, I it's it's very much a vicious cycle with with gaming and games communities i think and also stuff like reddit um reddit is very good at this it's very good at circle jerking it is a literally a circle jerk site uh, the upvote button ensures that only the opinions that everyone agrees with gets upvoted and everything that is currently against the uh, the prevailing opinion is downvoted and annihilated uh, and never gets heard. And I think there are a lot of very, very positive things about the build template thing. There are some issues uh, and we have to hope to, to kind of uh, have those fixed at some point. Um, I, I think the, the one in particular that I think could really be used being addressed is the fact that if you change your gear, right, it changes the template as well. That's a really big issue. Like that shouldn't be happening. That's that's a massive problem. Uh, and there needs to be some kind of like save button, right? In, instead of just like, yeah, it changes the template. That's, that's a pretty big issue. Uh, but we shall see how that goes down. Um, I, I don't know. Maybe this is bad of me. Maybe I've become an innocent bystander and kind of an onlooker and, and just too apathetic. But the way I look at it is like, dude, like, you, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you know, you might as well just, you might as well just like put on your red nose and like honk honk a little bit, right? That's that's the best you there can was, do, right? There, there, there's this prevailing opinion as well that like you're, you're getting build templates for free. They don't cost you anything. That's true. They only cost you money if you want to max it out or increase what the base value is. And you may want to do that and then it will cost you money. Um, but every like a lot of people that i talk to seem to have this in their mindset that they have to max it out and therefore it's going to cost them all this money and arena net is really scamming them and, and all this other stuff you, you know you don't need to do that necessarily will some people do it sure uh, I'm, I'm sure that they will but you don't necessarily need to build templates are free initially up to a certain point uh they're even going to give you an extra free three pack the week that it comes out or whatever uh, for the account slot version but um yeah i i don't know people are, are seeming like you have to pay for this in, in order to get it but you don't you're gonna get a, a small base to start with and if you want to increase it then you gotta pay money yeah and i mean well yeah it, it is gonna be monetizing it and it does suck but we don't even know the pricing yet and and this is where i do start to put some kind of fault onto a reading here i suppose like like they, they they could have avoided a lot of this outrage if they just kind of went went over it with everyone, right? Let's say, oh yeah, by the way, guys, and this is how much it's going to cost, or this is how much you know it's, it's going to cost. Like, and yeah, maybe we'll adjust it if you guys think you know if if it's too much, if people really don't like this. But um, I, I don't think they would. I don't think they would adjust it though, actually, because like, this is this is another thing that is 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 horrifying. Um, but almost nobody actually cares about this, and and almost nobody will actually buy any build templates, which is a bit sad actually. Um, I think most people will be perfectly happy with the two templates they have per character anyway. Like, I mean, most people most people don't have two builds, guys. Right? Even a lot of raiders probably only play one build, or one or two builds, or at least per character, because, you know, it does add up. Um, you know, like, not everyone here is Daroya, guys, with, like, legendary armor on every single fucking character, right? That, you know, that's, yeah. That's that's real, you know. I, I want to say that they like the is it, This has turned him into a full doomer. I don't know if you guys know this, but this is actually very very big. Deroyer has said that if they don't, if this system doesn't get reworked, um, he will. You know, he's done. He's actually checking out. Like he's saying, he's had a good run. He's getting the fuck out, right? Um, of Guild Wars too. Like you know, it's starting to get bad when not only the CEO is out, but also the NPCs are leaving as well. Like that's when you've definitely got a few issues. <laughs> <laughs> um, like when the NPCs are like, dude, I'm I'm out, oh, dude, I'm out of here. Um, but yeah, it's yeah, it's it's gonna be by, spicy. By the way, 
Snoops, it yeah. doesn't replace the PvP one yet because that won't be implemented in the system right away. Which is funny because like you'd think the PvP would be super easy. Because you just like you assign a number to each trait and you assign a number to each different amulet. It's like three digits that you have to store for each build. Like it's not very complicated to switch builds. Yeah. You know, like it might just be PvP yeah. should be super easy. Like, it must super easy. just be the ultimate spaghetti. A spaghetti that yeah, we, we would consider the UI code is probably like Im unimaginably difficult yeah, to, to, to work with. Yeah. It's just completely with. broken. Like that's it's it's probably what it is. Uh but well, yeah. Uh, that's that's another thing entirely, really. Um uh, with with regards to Guild Wars 2. They don't, they don't know how to squeeze some uh, some cash from PvP as is PvE as world versus world is. Well, um the, the thing that, that you know you say that cynically, World. but here's the thing. Um a lot of people in um <laughs> I think I would say the most of the serious PvPers they don't actually swap builds as such. Not not often anyway. They'll actually just have different characters for different builds in PvP. Like we yeah. we even saw this in the monthly AT. Like um, Sind and Tramadex just relog. Oh no, Sind like, relog from a thief to another thief, right? Um, uh, uh, yeah, and so like yeah, like a lot of the PvPers like they probably wouldn't even use this functionality, especially seeing um, I, I wonder if they would ever fix this sort of stuff. Like this is honestly like a bit a bit shady. Like you can swap builds during um tournaments, right? Okay, like by doing this, like the build templates won't let you do this, right? But there's a way to get around this. If you just relog, you can get on a different build, like what well, in the same tournament. Like you can you can do that, which is it was just kind of interesting. Like the build templates won't let you do this, uh, because you can't change your build while you're playing. But you can um, when you relog. You do have to suffer a time penalty, but yeah, it's it's still something that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. So it's you know it's a little bit um a little, a little bit spooky there on that you know for the for the tournaments there, but yeah. It's very yeah. I think it is very. It's very common for people to have more than one character, right? Um, anyway, with, of the same profession, yeah. right? They have more than one. Yeah. They you know this is like it's almost like an RP thing. So I think that's why why Arena Net were quite conservative with handing out all the build templates because they're giving away quite a lot for free, right? If you think about it, like suppose you have two characters each that's four build templates now and i i was four i didn't do this by choice but even i do this and i i'm not you know i'm not really much of a, of a role player or an altaholic as it is right like um i i have like a world versus world and pvp necro and then i have my pve necro as well right why do i do this because otherwise there'll be way too many builds to handle right like there's just too many uh you've got so much uh so much gear for, for all of these characters that it's completely out of control uh, you know, when Chrono existed in, well, when I still played Chrono before they deleted it from the game, um, you know, I had two Chronos because there was too much, there was too much gear. I had so many different builds uh, across all the, all the game modes and it was too much. It was too much to handle. Um, yeah, there you go. It, it's, um, yeah. So basically the only person getting truly screwed by this is DeRoy because he like role play named all his characters. Uh, and he wants to play like, one of them per profession, which I completely understand. Like, it's really, really fucking unfortunate that this is this is going down um, uh, for Deroy. I, I really hope they they address this in, in some way, but I I have my doubts. Right? <sighs> it won't it won't be right away, unfortunately. If they do address, if it, ever, like, honestly, if ever. Yeah. yeah. And that, yeah. sucks. It sucks for those who have multiple legendaries. It takes mm. away from that. It's, uh, <laughs> You know what we need? You know what we need in gaming? So, you know, let's, let's run away from Guild Wars 2. We're going to get depressed. What we need in gaming is is some serious wins, you know? This is what this is what we lack. Um, time and time again, it seems that everyone's getting let down. And it's actually led to this insane amount of cynicism in the in the gaming community, right? Like, everyone hates everything these days, right? You know, like no, no one, um, no one goes into something like, you know what, this is going to be great, right? Like all the upcoming titles, people just go, it's all going to be shit and it's going to be a complete disaster, right? Seriously, that's how it is, guys. Like, you know, the only company Feel that way with EA. Yeah, it like it, th this is how it goes, guys. Like if, if the game is made by either FromSoft or CJ Project Red, CD Project Red, okay? People say, yeah, this is probably gonna be a good game. If you're not from those companies, you're you know you're you're actually Hitler, right? Probably like, yeah, that's yeah, that's how it is, guys. Like you're legitimate. I'm, I'm just gonna say this now. Cyberpunk is gonna be a letdown. Ooh, 
Now, I, I know people are going to... That's big. Chat's going to blow that's up huge. in a second. That's huge, actually. But I, I say it's going to be a letdown because people have overhyped the game so much, there's no way it can live up to um, the, the hype that, that now exists for this game. Yeah, that that's... Yeah, yeah, honestly, like, you, you're not wrong there. Like that, It's the same as Half-Life 3, right? You know? Right, like, yeah. When Half-Life 3 comes out, if it ever does come out, if the game does exist um there's just no way that people will it will be it will be able to be as good as people will think it will be like it's because the hype storm will be so intense uh that there is no way <laughs> that it can be possibly good uh good enough to do that like no game can actually look no game can actually cure cancer and walk on water and turn wine into water right it, it can't be done right that's not like how cyberpunk jesus I'm, simulator I'm 2019 <laughs> <laughs> i'm positive that Cyberpunk will be a great game, but the hype is so high for it that there's going to be a shit ton of complaints like the first month or two. Star Citizen's another one. That game has been in development for so long, oh my and God. people have spent millions of dollars on stupid ships that don't even exist. Uh, yeah. It, the, Star Citizen may never Pictures actually release. I don't know. Yeah, like Star Citizen <laughs> may never release. <laughs> yeah. So like I, this is this is what I'm saying, right? I I think a lot of the problems and a lot of the woes in gaming, like in Guild Wars Two and basically everything, is because people have it's it's not that they have overly high expectations, is that that their their expectations constantly get dashed, or there's like overhype, or there's miscommunication, or people want different things. Like I do not envy any game devs right now. Like being a developer right now, it's probably a harrowing job. Like you go to the office and then you. You know, you, you, you say, oh, I'm going to see what the community is saying. And then you see like 50 PR different opinions. There's like a billion different like, opinions. Like everyone expects your games to be, everyone expects your games to be basically free. Okay. But also massive, constantly updated, <laughs> perfectly balanced. Right. And have amazing Update graphics. every day. Yeah. Every day. You got to look, come on. Balance once a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just keep doing it. If you don't do it, like you're a trash company. Like, so that, you know, you, you got to see it from both sides, you know, both sides of the table as well, boys. You know, like we're on one side, well, the, the yelling side, but also there are some pretty uh, unfortunate expectations placed upon the developers at the same time. You know, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's a little bit rough. You know, it's, it's pretty big. Oh, he's arguing straw now. No one expects that. No, that was called an exaggeration. But I, I, I also think that um, yeah, no one expects all of those yeah. things. Yeah. But everyone expects <laughs> one of those things. And when four different people each have their own individual expectation, it adds up to expecting all of those things. And then you, then people inevitably get pissed off. Yeah, they do get pissed off, and. Yeah, I with with the yeah, again like with the way that kind of stuff can spread online and and the way uh, you know people uh, uh, communicate, it does you know it does tend to kind of degenerate into like a, a massive flame fiesta, which is a little bit unfortunate, you know. Uh, and yeah, it kind of seems yeah. like a developer to succeed has to have a very strong vision for themselves and do very good at describing their vision to the community. So that the community has the same vision as them, yeah, and has the same expectations as them. Like if you go out there and you're like, "Yeah, the game's gonna be good, all things, all people," then you're fucked. Yeah. But if you're like, "Here's the game yeah. we are making. It's gonna do exactly this and be exactly like this, and we think it's gonna be great," people will be like, "Dude, I like exactly that. So therefore, I agree." Like I then, then that, you'll uh, have the right messaging. But I, I think that companies don't put enough emphasis and talent into their PR departments. They probably don't pay them enough either because uh, in the last year or two, in the last couple of years, actually, uh, and certainly more recently, a lot of these companies are going through P PR disaster after PR disaster. It feels like, you know, it's one mistake after another with these companies on a variety of things, not just Guild Wars 2 or World of Warcraft more recently, but uh, just, just larger ea is a big one who is just pr disaster after pr disaster with them yep well one thing that's funny is like we think of like ea and stuff as like big companies but these are not in the grand scheme of things big companies like it's not they're not amazon they're not like microsoft like those are big companies that can hire 
legitimately talented PR people. And even <laughs> those companies still make mistakes. Yeah. So imagine, and then they're hiring like Ivy leaguers with like advanced degrees in, in public relations. Whereas like companies like Activision, they're probably hiring people that went to community college <laughs> and like have no experience and were like QA <laughs> testers a week before, like, and got promoted to PR like head. So expecting them to like, be able to handle disasters is just like completely insane. Like, like think of every bad local mom and pop restaurant you've ever been to. And like, it's a small business, like small businesses fuck up bad. Like <laughs> EA is a small business in the grand scheme of things compared to like big corporations. So, I mean, I, I don't have like such a high standard for them that I'm that like, I think they're going to be no. like infallible. Yeah. I think I think the the problem is is that I think that the communities are often very very difficult to control as well. Um, it, it's not just like people are somewhat incompetent and they're you know they're they're a bit rubbish. It's also just like the whole gamers rise up kind of meme. It, it's it, it's a meme, but it's also not right. Uh, the the gaming community will swing its full force at you, right? And they will not stop. They will keep doing it, right? Even if they kind of think they're wrong, they're just going to do it anyway. At this point, you know, um, it, it was it, you know it's a lot like. So it, it, <laughs> I love this stuff. Like, you know, like uh, this is one of my favorite memes. Like, on the Guild Wars 2 subreddit, right? Like, one of the most upvoted posts of all time is, like, just, like, do not buy this game, pretty much. It's like, do not pre-order Heart of Thorns. It's like, wow. Who like, did that? Yeah, yeah. Who posted that? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Let's, let's find out. It was Brazil. You, you, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. Wait, was it Brazil? Yeah, Brazil did a video that said, do not pre-order Heart of Thorns. And that was, like, where yep. people posted that. <laughs> Oh no, yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a that's a big meme right there. You know, that's um, yeah. So like, we got Brazil to thank for that one, um, but yeah, I I think that controlling the narrative is is very very difficult because people will just ignore you and that they'll be immediately cynical to you as well. Like I, I think this is why a lot of companies just don't bother. Like this is perhaps why ArenaNet doesn't bother. It's because they know that everything they say, um, it will be completely torn to shreds, right? And people are gonna be like ultra ultra uh. <laughs> ultra ultra uh cynical about it and then make it look retarded either way you know like it's um it's not it's not an easy it's not an easy uh thing to do actually as well uh doing pr wait like, i think you guys are unfair to pr there's no way to sell rng loot boxes yeah like if your company has shitty um practices there's absolutely no way uh that you're going to be able to get around it right but saying like surprise mechanics oh my god like this is some serious cringe dude oh my dude i i'm sorry i you guys have phones, right? Like, yeah. Come on. Oh, oh, that is just oh, that messaging is oh, like, yeah. Holy shit, yeah. man! Like, do you not know how <sighs> to deal with people at all? Like, can you imagine after they got off stage, he, <sighs> the guy must have been thinking to himself, "Why did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Why did I say that? <laughs> that was the worst thing I could have said." <laughs> Oh yeah, it is. It is. It's a. It's a big ouchie, dude. It's a big ouchie. I think you guys are uh, overestimating the effect of Reddit getting outraged. It literally got developers fired at ArenaNet. I don't think I'm overestimating us. Because look, I, 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 I can actually use this. This is a great example of this. Actually, like Reddit and and the community is so powerful. Like they will, they will make you bend the knee. Like there is. A, look, I'm going to say this, guys. There is actually. Uh, I don't want to get overly political, but there's a very legitimate. Um case that like the gaming community like the reddit and the online media it might actually get blizzard to do something about um it, they already did a little bit of thing about the guy uh, the blitz chung guy who got um you know he, he did uh, he got kicked out of hearthstone and stuff like that they already reduced it it's entirely possible like that the reddit outrage continues and blizzard might eventually cave like it's it's possible right okay but look in guild wars 2 right um deroya wasn't the first person um, oh, they have it on the loot box. Yeah, they absolutely did. They made um, Star Wars. The, the Battlefront caved on the loot boxes because of like the mega outrage. They, they caved on this, right? Um, but look, um, Daroya wasn't the first person to have a run-in with old JP, right? Like, Inks and Jebro had both been there before, right? And you know what? ArenaNet didn't give a fuck, okay? Not a not even one fuck, okay? But I'm here's pretty sure she. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she she said something to the effect of Jebro that he was a Nazi sympathizer for for liking, liking, liking Avengers, for liking Avengers, yeah, yeah. for liking <laughs> Avengers Endgame or something. Like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and Jebro's like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, the bizarre thing too with that is like 
Uh, Jebro's uh, wife at the time still worked at arena and i think she doesn't now but i i I don't like pry into people's personal lives that much but at at that time she at least still worked there so it's bizarre that like she's like criticizing a co-worker's spouse on twitter and it's like sure it's not on jessica price to like know who everybody is but like holy shit man like (laughs) it's a co-worker's spouse shut the fuck up like oh my god are you that insufferable like my god uh, I ne- never underestimate the the power you have as like a giant mob, right? Because like, appearances are everything, right? In, in this business, guys, or in any business, really, like the the there is a very thin thin line between what people think is true and what actually is true, and that's a horrifying and depressing realization to have, but it's true nonetheless. Um, yeah. I, you you really don't want people um, like going around with their pitchforks poking things, right? Like, that's not what you want. You really don't want that. Uh, and so like, the fact that a lot of companies are, are a bit crap at this is um, it it really it hurts them, but it also hurts the community as well, in my opinion. Like it really hurts the gaming community that everyone is kind of like running around angry all the time. I think I think it's it's. Uh, over the, I, I, I'm definitely guilty of this as well. Like the way I look at things is a lot more cynical than it was, say, five years ago. Like maybe it's because I'm an old man now. I, you know, I, I've become a boomer, right? You know, like I, I've got my stock portfolio. I trade those cryptocurrencies, and I've got my Monster Energy drink, right? Um, like it might be because of that, but I, I do think it is because like this kind of like the epic cycles of negativity that kind of just spiral around into infinity, right? Um. And it just gets everyone down. And it also kind of makes this rift between the companies, right? Um, I, I find that the, the really, really big companies, like, well, Blizzard is a really good example of this. Like, ArenaNet is another good example of this. Like, they end up getting very disconnected and almost like a little bit, almost like afraid of the community in a way. Like, and, and they just don't want to go anywhere near them. Like, the, don't you guys have... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Boomers don't trade crypto; they invest. Oh, okay. I need to. Okay, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. Uh, but yeah, you know, the, the, the 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 you don't have phones thing is like such a big meme because like how could they not have known that this was the reaction they were gonna get from Diablo Immortal, right? Well, that's where the PR thing comes in. Someone mentioned in chat, like, well, that guy's not in PR. Well, that's the problem. PR tells should he's just a dev. Why is a dev like he needs to be given talking points? From PR, PR should be telling him what to say. You know, like that's what PR does. Like, yes, he's a dev. Bring out the dev to talk about dev things, but like he needs to be on message. Like, there's there needs to be a message that he needs to stay on and not go off script. It's not I his mean, job to go off script. Yeah, I, like that's he, how it works. He's just it, you know, it's just a human thing. Though he got frustrated with the crowd booing him, <laughs> <laughs> and, which again, was harsh. Again, like <laughs> no problem. Yeah, How I, do you I know. Not anticipate I anticipate that's going to be the crowd's reaction. Uh, the PR department course, should, have, should have said the crowd is going to take a shit on this, yeah. <laughs> and it's not going to be good. <laughs> like, so get ready for booze. What are we going to do if they boo? Yeah. Like, you and, and have they're not a- doing it now. Like, they're not doing Diablo Immortal now. They're not it's canceled. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they canceled. Wait, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Holy shit! Uh, it'll come out in the China market, guarantee you. Well, it already was. It was like a reskin of a of a Chinese mobile game or something. <laughs> oh, it's what? been it's been delayed. Okay. Oh, uh, it's been delayed. Okay. Yeah, it'll come out right after StarCraft Ghost or whatever that. that <laughs> oh <laughs> boy! Oh boy! The FPS. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Man. Yeah, that's. I want that's StarCraft quite a meme. Ghost so bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. StarCraft Ghost probably would have been really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's be honest. It probably would have been, but unfortunately, they probably like didn't took happen. everything cool about it and put it into fucking Overwatch. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised. That's how it usually goes. Like, you know, if if a game gets canceled, they kind of roll some of those features into something else, right? Just like Ashes of Creation being turned into a battle royale game. No, okay, no. Uh, but then, you know, that's a, that's a topic. That's a topic for another time, boys. Okay, that's that's for another time. Yeah, uh, it, it, it always shocks me when people don't realize how this is going to go down. It, and, you know, again, to go back to the build templates topic, okay? How did they not know that this is how this would go down? You know what I mean? Like, how did they not know? I mean, anyone could have told them. If they, like, gone undercover, right? You know what they should have done? This is, okay, Arena, this is, the, okay, this would be actually a galaxy brain if you guys did this, right? 
what you need to do is, right, like a few weeks before you're actually going to announce it, you do like a shitty paste bin, like leak of everything that you're actually going to say, right? And do it under a, a, a fresh throwaway Reddit account and then just see what people say about it, right? And then if people don't like it, you can change it. Right? And then if people do like it, then you can just say, Oh, dude, we're really sorry. There was a leak, man. There was like a, there was like a big leak. You know what I mean? Um, like that's, that's what you gotta do. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. You gotta, you gotta actually leak yeah. your own content. You know, you know, that's, that's another thing about leaks. This is a really, um, uh, this is a really sad thing. Uh, uh, I think that the leaks about Path of Fire really helped the game so much, actually. Like it may, I, I was like, really hyped. The, I was really hyped. Yeah. Very early. Oh. That was and so fucking it was sick. Juicy as yeah, hell. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so juicy, dude. The hype was real at that point. Like yeah. when Weaver leaked, everyone was like, oh my yes. God. Yes. It was like, God, but all the artwork as well, all the cool weapons, uh, and all that stuff, like, it was fucking so sick. Oh my God. Yeah, that was Who amazing. knows how or when they would have rolled that information out? Yeah. Like, maybe never. <laughs> like HRT, they did a pretty good job of like one 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 elite spec per week mm. and like doing like a pretty organized rollout. But it didn't seem like Path of Fire, like between when they announced it and when they released it, was not a lot of time. So they couldn't even do the one per week thing. They wouldn't have had enough time. So like I don't know how they were actually planning on rolling it out if it wasn't for the leaks. Like, yeah. So, yeah. It, it yeah, definitely worked in their it, favor, it, it, I think. It, this is something that I, I, I think that... I'm, I'm not sure how other companies do this. Like, I think Warframe is really good at doing kind of dev streams and stuff like that. But one, one of the issues I have with the, the way ArenaNet do streams is that they're not very long at all, right? Like, you'll blink and you've missed it, right? Um, like, they stream, uh, like, the guild chat and stuff like that. It's, it's like an hour. Like, their presentation about the Ice Brood saga was... I think it was a... 40 minutes or something like that right it, it was it was really really short it was like 40 minutes like we're not even 45 right i it, it's just you know give us some meat right i mean like I, i've been around on twitch a little bit and i know right that if you want to you know to, to get everyone into the stream right for people to figure out that you're actually live it takes fucking ages right to be able to kind of work that out you know it's not instantaneous even like the really big boys right they, yeah you they should put up like a 48 yeah. hour oh, 48 day yeah. countdown counter before if you want people to actually show up to, to be fair, that actually but turns worked out, out it worked it worked it out really they well had, they had a million people fucking yeah yeah, yeah. That, it, that worked like, out it extremely worked. well like that that was like a double whammy like not only was everyone really aware of it right um also it got people we really hyped about it because they thought it was going to be massive right it was oh, going to be a huge a mistake, fucking awesome i mean that was that was a slight mistake to actually not have anything massive and like to instead just try and sell songs on tidal but you know, like it, it was, yeah, it was, it was pretty good. You know, that was actually a really. Like, when I saw that, I thought, dude, this is actually fucking sick. Like, Arena has actually learned, right? Um, and then, and then maybe not so much. Well, right? they got half the lesson. Yeah, they, they, yeah, <laughs> they did indeed. They did indeed. You know, I still love, I still love the best line of that entire presentation. It was just like, yeah, there's the one PVP fan. There, we found him. We got him. There he is, the one guy who likes PvP. He's in the he back. Was bad man. Like, <laughs> that's was like bad. that was like the equivalent of the PVE that doesn't suck from the yeah. HOT yeah. launch. That was yeah. good. Oh, that was so good. Like I, you know what? They Arena one hundred percent learned from that because they didn't like pick random people. They had like set people, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. yeah, they found the goofiest motherfuckers in costume oh, that they the... could find, and <laughs> yeah, there was, like, some motherfucker like dressed up as a choya. It's like what? <laughs> It's so good. Oh, that, that that was good. A lot. I'm I'm actually gonna defend Arena there. Uh, a lot of people thought thought that was really goofy and and really cringe. I actually don't agree. I I think it was actually kind of cute and a bit goofy. Very Arena. Like Arena is kind of like the uh, you know the slightly goofy company, and, and I really liked it actually. I, I thought I thought it was a, it was really well done. Like the only thing that was a bit weird was when they had those two guys come out in like the fur suits at the end. Like that, what what the fuck was that? You know, I don't really understand that one at all. Uh, but other than that, it was good. You know, you're talking about that was the best. Yeah, yeah, that was that, that was your, yeah. Ever. You like that part? That was the good. That was the good part. The only thing the only thing for me was the whole marketing thing was it was just a bit too much. You know. Um, I, I guess I guess the the they, they didn't come with enough information either. Like at, at one point they're talking about world versus world alliances or whatever. They mention it for like half a second, and and the host is like, 
tell us more. And the guy's like, uh, more soon or something. He's like, no, tell us now. You're here. You should. I mean, the host was right. You should have this stuff prepared ahead of time. Like, and I'm sure well, that's that like the difference kind of between scripting, Inet but and, and Warframe. Like right, when exactly, you watch like yeah. the Warframe dev streams, you're never going to hear a dev go, "Oh, I don't think I can talk about that yet." That's no, never yeah, just, just mention the phrase. It. Oh, I'm not sure I'm allowed to talk about that. Is never going to come up. Like they just will not say that. Same thing for like Path of Exile when they do like their league every three months. You're never going to hear the guy go, "Oh, I can't talk about that feature yet." No, they're going to like talk any like they're they can talk about anything. Like there's there's nothing that they can't talk no no topic they can't bring up. Like the devs don't have like this knife hanging over them. Like if they say the wrong thing, they get fired. Like obviously, there's like a a very real culture of fear about saying too much at ArenaNet. Like they wouldn't say, "I don't think I can talk about that" if that culture didn't exist. Mm. So it must. Do you think this comes back to the thing you were talking about, vision, Nike? Right, like you need to have, you need to have like that. This is what it, this is how it's going, right? Um, and you have to have that self surety, and like because of like, I think Arena are a little bit kind of afraid of of being too like, yeah, this is we're, we're pushing the game in any one direction. They prefer to kind of push out in every direction, and instead of instead of that, uh, you know, going for a really focused approach. And that's why they don't really say, "Oh, we can't talk about that," because they, they, in a way, they they don't want to ever admit that they're wrong or that something didn't work out, right? Like, that is like the cardinal sin at Arena. Like, there's there are no losers at Arena, guys, right? Every idea is equal. Every idea is great, you know. Like stronghold, stronghold, that, that, it's not cancelled. It's still in, it's still in development, guys. It's still there, you know. Guild halls, that's you know, that's you know, that that's in the game, right? I know, like they they um yeah. I I think this is this just an arena net problem though because like, if you say that it, it, Warframe does a really good job of this one presumably right, but like does does do are there any other companies do this or is it just like just a raid net that is a bit yeah, of a Path of, of a clown fiesta? GGG does a very good job of communicating. Um, I know a, a very like, small company, but Cyan does a good job of the mist like talking to the mist players. Yeah, they're like, a very small company, like, but Wizards of the Coast like in Magic the Gathering they do a great job of of communicating and, and like yeah, a decent job. Yeah. Not, not terrible. They're responsive. Yeah. Like they, they listen, but um, I don't know with like arena net. I think the problem is their policy is don't talk about it until it's gone gold. Once it's gone gold, then you can talk about it. But there's a, there's a difference between going gold and hitting the point of no return like there's a point in development, maybe it's not gold yet, but it's like silver, where it's like we're not gonna scrap it at this point. Like, like you know it's going to ship. It's 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 not gold yet, but it's going to ship. That's when I think it's okay to start talking about stuff. If you wait till it's gold, you're like you're gonna have too many times of like, I can't talk about it, I can't talk about it, I can't talk about it. But there is like a point of no return. Like when they announced HOT, if you remember, they said, and, and they were very vague about raids. They said challenging group content. Ultimate, yeah, challenging group content. They didn't say raids. They didn't. They didn't say raids till later. They just said challenging group content because they had this policy of like, well, the first raid isn't like in a shippable state yet, so we're not going to talk. Like we can't talk about it like publicly. But I feel like they knew it was going to be raids. They knew there would be raids. So why not say it? Because this crazy don't ship it or don't talk about it till it's ready to ship policy. And I think that is the limiting thing with ArenaNet is that they can't talk about like alliances. I mean, the fact that it's been delayed for so long is like because they made an exception to that rule and talked about it probably too early. They talked about it when it was like on like the whiteboard stage yeah, rather yeah. than like oh, very much. They even showed us the whiteboard pretty much, right? Like it's a, uh, uh. I'm not sure if it was too early though. Um, well, I, I think this is like a, a problem with, with, with arena net, like maybe specifically, it, it does take them a long time to do stuff. Right. I mean, I, I'm sorry, boys. You know, I hate to be the armchair dev, okay, and you know, do that sort of thing. But look, Swiss tournaments were promised, like uh, you know, well, not promised, but they said, yeah, we're gonna change the tournaments to Swiss in December 2017, as in just not even like add tournaments, change the way the tournament bracket operates. Like that, well, that was two years ago at this point. 
Like, what? Oh no! Like, how is that possible that it can take that long to do this stuff? You know, it's it, what, what? What is going on? And what is the situation? I mean, it will probably happen soon because um, there are a lot of changes, and apparently, a lot of the issues with um, the, the 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 tournaments we're having right now was because of changes that they made to the tournaments because of Swiss, right? So in theory, it should happen soon. But yeah, the the the, the communicate. I can kind of in in some ways, this is why you can kind of understand the communication policy, right? Because they said that um they said this was coming early, right? And now they get roasted again and again and again for not putting it in the game because of how long the development but cycle. But see, is. the the problem is the community knows the the active community on Reddit, watching podcasts like this, they know spaghetti code they, they know that the engine has problems and for years right so just tell people just say hey you know swiss is delayed because we're having problems with the engine or whatever people might still get pissy or whatever but the truth is people understand that the engine is not great it's dated you know whatever um so like a lot of these things alliances and and pvp swiss it, it's coding issues it's issues with the engine itself yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, I don't know how many people know this, but they spent almost a year working on the back end of World vs. World just so more than one dev could work on it at a time <laughs> because the, the code and engine oh, was no. such a mess. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't the engine know that. isn't. I, I didn't. I, know I that. mean, the, the engine is their excuse for years now, but I mean, it's it's the truth, whether you like the truth or not. I mean, that's what the problem is. Yeah, and is. I don't know so what... Either they can say nothing it. to you, like, which is what they do, or they can tell you, we're dealing with the engine. The only reason... The only... Like, there's nothing they can do about it. They they can't come up... Like, a new engine is basically a new game at this point. Like, there's, there's no sense in revamping the Guild Wars 2 engine. Like, if you come up with a new engine, you might as well just make Guild Wars 3, which is seemingly what they're probably doing. But, yeah, like... The, the engine is what it is, and there's no fixing it, so they should be hopefully full steam ahead on Guild Wars 3. Yeah. Who knows? Who uh, who knows? I mean, they're, they're, yeah, and, and that's true. I, I don't think there's ever going to be, like, an engine rework for Guild Wars 2. There will be no point. Like, as Nike yeah, it, it, it would, it would literally be a new game. 12 revamp. It's yeah! Like, dude, just how about Guild Wars 3, if you're going to go through that much trouble? Like, come on. What if they did a relaunch like Final Fantasy did? I don't think the game is as broken as Final Fantasy was to deserve I, that. Like well, Final that, Fantasy was true. a literal <laughs> dead game, like as dead as a dead game gets. Like, and they re and they had to relaunch it because they had no choice. Guild Wars Two is a cash cow, but yeah. they they will they will milk those teats for the next ten years if they have to. So it has no pressing need of a relaunch. The, the, why, the, this why is, do it? We, we were talking about kind of like community perceptions and stuff like that. And this is what kind of really like memes me and like irks me a little bit. Like, I think that if Guild Wars 2 actually launched, right, today, right, like, you know, everyone was getting excited about, dude, Guild Wars 2, it's been set like 10 years in development since 2009 or something, right? Okay, wow, hype. If they release the game as it is now, um, tomorrow i think the game will be insanely successful and it would do really well I, I think a relaunch in a way could do this game a whole world of good i don't know how they'd be able to pull it off i don't know what how they would relaunch it or what exactly final fantasy did um uh, you know I'm not, I'm not sure how they what they did to relaunch the game what they, exactly that entailed um but if they could actually pull it off with guild wars 2 i think that would do that would do incredibly well actually like, it, it would be an in, insanely good thing like, um if they could do that like because i think that a lot of parts about this game would actually be what people are looking for like it's it's a really um big uh per it would be the perfect storm right now everyone's really mad at blizzard people are probably just starting to quit classic wow um uh, yeah like people want an mmo like people want to play an mmorpg and, and honestly like, guild wars 2 is is probably like, the most criminally underrated of all the mmorpgs right now uh like everyone thinks it's and... like a, a meme dead game but I, I think that a lot of people would actually enjoy it like it, you know it's yeah like relaunching the game would be a, a really good idea if they could actually figure out a way to do it like, if they could do like a push and kind of get a um kind of and kind of say aha Right, we've got this kind of pack of features that we're we're launching, and Guild Wars Two is back, right? Or an expansion or something like that. That would be huge. Like, or Guild Wars Three, that would be huge as well. Like, that would be that would be fucking big. 
Arcade Unchained what they would is coming have to out. Do, what they would have to do to relaunch Guild Wars 2 would be to have the same, functionally the same game with the same systems, but come out with an expansion where you couldn't play it on your existing characters. You had to start with a fresh level zero character and you didn't have access to your old economy. Like it was just like a totally different like game world almost, but it was like the same systems. Like that's the only way that they could do that. I think. Yeah. I, I just say a relaunch because like Guild Wars 2, it would be like Guild Wars 2 Cantha, but you'd have to roll a new character. You aren't going to be able yeah. to take your like, I wouldn't mind that. Characters there. Um, I, I, I that's I kind of like know. that. I kind of like that part of the game. You know, like when you're doing something new. I mean, it would be a bit different because we'd already done it before. But um, couldn't you take it was a different but world in Guild Wars One? Like that, you had that experience where you could play a new, a brand new character, a new class, right? But you could also take your old ones there, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. the old ones would like get there like. 15% of the way through the story when you got off of like the training zone areas. Okay. So I mean like something like that I think is definitely doable. And and but for the record, I say a relaunch uh with like an updated engine, a, a, a today 2019 engine, which I know is a lot of work and a lot of money. Um because if you go to let's say let's say they launch Guild Wars 3, which is not happening, but let's just say Guild Wars 3. If you do a Guild Wars 3, everybody starts over. Now there's some excitement in that, but at the same time um, and I know Droyer definitely feels this way. If you announce that, people stop playing Guild Wars 2. Even if they do like a Hall of Monuments thing. I think Hall of Monuments thing would oh. be enough to keep people. Oh, I, you know what? But, oh. the, but the sales the sales suffer. And all the stuff mm. that you've bought in Guild Wars 2 doesn't really transfer to Guild Wars 3 unless they figure that out somehow. Honestly, so, you'd have to just keep doing living stories. The problem with Guild Wars 1 was they gave you the Hall of Monuments, but then they stopped making new content for like three years. Right. Like, but I the North think... came out, and then you had three mm -hmm. years till Guild Wars Guild Wars 2 launched. Yeah. You'd have to keep having, you'd have to announce Guild Wars 3, and then, but just keep doing Guild Wars 2 Living Story, like, right up till three months before Guild Wars 3 launched, so that people were still engaged. Yeah. And that would be, if they were able to, put, I imagine that would be very, very difficult to do, but if that was feasible, that would be huge to pull off, right? That would be completely insane if they were able to pull that off. Uh, just, you know, for the game, that would be fucking crazy. Uh, but, I mean, who knows? Who knows if they're going to be able to, you know, what, you know what's gonna, how it's going to go down, right? Like, we, you know, we don't know. We, we, just, we just don't know. Uh, but, yeah, it would, be, it, would be definitely, it would definitely be exciting, I think, uh, if they were able to do that. Um, uh, Guild Wars 3 would be, would be pretty fucking hype. Uh, if, if we, it would do really well, I think. Like, it, it, and I wouldn't be surprised if they did kind of just release it randomly, if that makes any sense. I, I really would not be surprised if they just said, oh, yeah, by the way, guys. Uh, Guild Wars 3, here it comes! Um, and yeah, that, that's just, that is the arena net way. Like, it's entirely possible that right now, um, the devs are kind of like, ha, if only they knew. They're like laughing at us yeah. right now. Something's coming at the end of this Living Story season. Like, when this Living Story season ends, like, it's either going to end with an expansion or a new game. It's, if they go, okay, well, Living Season 5 is over, we're going to go right into oh, 6. God. People will be like, 6? Fuck this. Like, that is not what people want. Like, like, so something's got to come. And they haven't announced an expansion. They haven't announced a new game. But it's pretty obvious that it's got to be one of the two. Yeah, but the they've got the more season. than a year of padding. Yeah, it's like, if out. you if you say, like, six episodes, like, it's almost two years of, of padding. Yeah. Yep. It, it, it's, a, it's a tricky one, like, with how long this story is going to take. I mean, um... I think didn't they say that it was going to come out like at a at a faster pace? I mean, I know we've heard that one before, but well, we're supposed to get anymore. We're supposed to get an episode in November, which would be faster than last season. Yeah, I think it. it I I'm predicting like November fifth or the twelfth, because like, uh, uh, Halloween ends on the fifth, so right. a week after that, the twelfth, there's your episode, right? Boom, easy. And then you'll probably yeah. get an episode end of January, beginning of February. Yeah. There, there has to be a fractal in the next living in the yeah. episode okay. one. There has yeah. to be. What if a fractal is not effectively dead content? I mean, they will be dead content if there isn't a fractal in in that episode. It's like what well, you just have to assume that one, not even one fractal a year, like less than one a year. But how I mean, how many um frac didn't like most of the fractal devs kind of not exist anymore? I mean. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, see, the problem is it's hard to know with ArenaNet who still who's working on things because only a small percentage of the devs are public figures, and the larger percentage are people you've never heard of that are working, and they don't tweet and they don't go on Guild Chat and they don't and like all, they don't go on Reddit AMAs or yeah. managers. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Well, they don't go on. They they're not public facing, so. There could be six guys working on raids and fractals and we don't know a single name. Like, so it's entirely possible. Yeah. Yeah. Like we know Anet Ben, right? We do. For PvP. How many people work with him? How many people are on his team? We don't I mean it's I don't just him. Know. Yeah, it's just him. That's probably that explains a lot, but like there's gotta he's gotta at is, least have is that some why everybody's interns. a lead? He's gotta have some interns. <laughs> Free labor, come on! Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, look, dude, don't underestimate the arena interns. Like one of them made Freezy on on, the, on their own. Exactly. So yeah, like, you got to you got to respect the interns, man. That's yeah, that's big. That is big. Yeah, I know. I, I, no, I, I yeah, it, it is a bit tricky to kind of understand what's going on. And, and in a way, like it's none of our fucking business, really. You know, like it's an internal thing. So I don't think it you know necessary. They need to say, oh yeah. This is exactly how our company works in every single way. That's perhaps a little unreasonable to uh, to ask. Yeah, that I want to see their company. org chart released yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> weekly. Yeah, I need to know who is on what project at all times. I, know, yeah. I want to know who reports to who. Does Blizzard do that? Like, wait, do they? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Like, does the do, the do people in the WoW community know like the different teams, the raid team, and? Like I don't feel like I ever knew that when I played WoW. I, I think Blizzard is a, is arguably worse than Arena. This actually, um, like uh, apparently, um, you never like the the apparently the concept of having a dev in the Twitch chat, right? Like a Blizzard dev, is it completely unheard of, right? Like that would never happen, um, with with Blizzard. Whereas with 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 Control, controlling that narrative, yeah. Yeah, they just they just don't talk. Like they they just they just fucking this is how it is. Enjoy, okay? Like you just fucking go. Um, yeah. Like right. they can only think of maybe a handful of games where the players actually know the developers and what they're working on and which teams they're on and and so on and so forth. Like I don't think that's a regular thing for most video game companies mm. to know. Yeah. You do get a lot of I think it, the communication is very different though. Like it, it, with with Blizzard like you get quite a lot of uh, communication with the developers like not di not not directly but kind of formally i suppose like you, you know uh, there's a lot of stuff about balance changes like to all the bosses like upcoming updates all that sort of thing um that that happens a lot uh with, with regards to that and i think um in hearthstone they talk on the subreddit sometimes as well so that's going on there but yeah i think yeah oh yeah old school runescape is really good at this like you can just tweet at them right and then the, the, they might they might respond you know and they have a lot of streams where they uh where they communicate with the, the community very well there as well. So like there's yeah you know, there there are there are some examples of it being done well. Like yeah, like Warframe is pretty good as is, is a very famous example. Their, their streams do extremely well, uh, and people seem to be pretty happy with them in terms of communication. Yeah, like de yeah, and devs devs should not be responsible for this, right? That's kind of our point though. Um, in a way, like the the fact that most of the communication um in the game comes from like Anet Ben P, who it's not his job to do that. Right, he's just he's just a developer. Like he does his thing he and he likes makes the out game. On Twitch. Yeah, he just likes hanging out on Twitch, you know. Yeah, a lot of uh, genuine communication you get from that are from developers who are not, you know, who are basically working off the clock to update the community. Is like, yeah, that, that's probably shouldn't be happening, you know. That's that's not good. Uh, but well, there you go. I suppose that is uh, that's how it goes sometimes. Unfortunately, with, Ben uh, P with plays games. a little bit of uh, Magic the Gathering Arena as well. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah, he's playing. Yeah, me, me, me and him played a few games. Yeah? Did you win? Yes. Yes, I did. Ah. Threw him in the dumpster. No yeah. mercy. No mercy. Yeah. Okay. Did you cheese Thanks him out? Thanks for the packs, noob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, he's a good guy though. Yeah, he's playing classic with us as well. Actually, you know, he's betrayed Guild Wars too. Playing some classic WoW too. And so uh, you know, leveling up, gonna hit the raids. You know, he's hitting raids soon. He's gonna be in the mix. So yeah. Feels good, man. It does feel good. Feels damn good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, there's a, yeah. Like even though we do, you know, of course we're most associated with the reading net uh, and you know with we we know that game very well and the company very well. Like yeah, like not not um all companies are good. In fact, very few companies are good as well, right? So you know we can shit on all of them. Like this is why do you guys think that we've gone from the Guild Wars two channel? 
to the Gaming Talk Shows channel. Very simple, my friends. Very, very simple. Now, we have a massive array of people we can shit on. We can shit on anyone now. Right, uh, yeah. and they can't we were stop like us. monkeys, and we we're throwing our feces at yeah. one person. Now we're throwing it at everybody. Yeah, people. exactly. This week is Blizzard. It is Blizzard. Yeah, <laughs> look, I I do want to formally, on behalf of Arena and every company that isn't Blizzard, uh, I want to thank Blizzard for making every company, including EA, actually look good. Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this. But Blizzard have managed to clown themselves so hard uh, and get destroyed by the community to such an extent that I actually can't say that Arena have had any PR disasters before because this is like another level of PR disaster that I don't think we've witnessed in the gaming community. Can anyone think of anything worse than this? Like the only thing that's even comparable is like the um, the Battlefront loot box shit. That's the only thing that could be worse than this or, or like arguably equal. Like, but uh, and other than that, this this Blizzard thing yeah, has got to be the worst. media. Like, that's true. Yeah, like, like lead story on mainstream media. So like that's that's a huge that is big issue. Yeah. In fact, I'm honestly surprised Trump hasn't tweeted about it. Like he's so, getting ready. He's setting he, up his Twitter. Some page. politicians have. Like some politicians have. Yeah, done. yeah. Some have. Yeah, but not Trump. Like the Trump yeah, hasn't. He hasn't. He ha well, I mean, he probably doesn't even know like what a video game is, but. <laughs> He's ready though. He, 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 he's he's yeah. set up his Twitch. I'm sure, page. he's got an opinion. He's on Twitch now. Watch yeah, yeah, he's actually on he Twitch. Likes, he says he doesn't like China, so why doesn't yeah. he like tweet? Oh, that's true. Like... Yeah, this is like, dude, he's gonna be so happy. Like, this is the perfect opportunity. Like, it, it's easy, right? The White House PR team took away his phone. He's like scrabbling to try and find it and get it back, and then he's gonna unleash. Okay. <laughs> Every day they yeah. play a hide and seek with him. Yeah, and yeah. They hide the phone yeah, somewhere yeah. else in the White House. <laughs> they distract him with fucking McDonald's. McDonald's. Get his yeah, mind Big off Macs. of the phone. <laughs> It's gonna be the the big meme when that happens. Me, I well, oh, it is good. Maybe it'll take make people take a gaming a bit more seriously because I don't, don't know about you boys, but like when I see something on my you know my television stations here on the BBC, right? Like there's there's like you know you you got various channels. You got BBC One, which is like the normie channel. Um, then you got BBC Three, which is like the one that is supposed to be for young adults, but it's really adults pretending to be young adults. You know what I mean? It's like they try and pretend to be down with the kids, but they're really not. Um, and what they do on BBC Three is they typically, when they try and talk about gaming, uh, they have people who have absolutely no idea about gaming try and talk about gaming. It's quite funny, actually. Um, and yeah. That's one thing that freaks me out about the media. <laughs> is like, if you're like deep into anything, like be it sport or gaming or whatever hobby you're into, or even not hobby, like maybe it's just like industry, like the job you work in mm. if, and you know how it really works. Whenever the media reports on something that you know really well, you see how much they get wrong, <laughs> right? So then it makes you think if they're getting everything wrong that I know about, the topics that they're talking about that I don't know about, they're probably just as wrong on those things too. Holy shit. And literally everything on the news is fucking wrong that is horrifying like if, if like if you're like hardcore runner and like you hear them talk about running and you're like that's not right that's not right that's not right then they do a story on bowling you have to assume that everything about bowling was fucking wrong and it's <laughs> and it, so like i'm pretty sure everything they say is just complete garbage that is actually horrifying that's an incredibly good point i've never thought of that oh my god why would you say that no <laughs> Oh no! I have nothing to say. That is horrifying. Uh, yeah. Fuck. That's too real. That is way too real, actually. Everything is wrong. Everything they say is wrong. There you go. Don't trust everything, guys. And it, well, yeah. and the problem is, it's usually not always one hundred percent wrong. It's like it's like thirty percent wrong. So like everything's just slightly wrong that you're hearing. <laughs> like it's just slightly not right. And that's even that's in many ways worse. It's more frustrating, right? So you're so close. Yeah. You know? You're so close. Huh. Well, how about that? I think that is that is a, a good bombshell to end on, boys. Uh, you know, we've been we've been going uh, you know, a long time, I think, a decent length uh, podcast over here in the new category for tea time. But yeah, I think that'll about do it for us. Uh yeah. 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream. It's now time to do some mild chilling. I tried to fix the bot. I've no idea if it actually worked. Um, it didn't. Oh, okay. There we go. I'll, I'll, I'll try it again some other time. Uh, but never mind. Um, you can find links to our boys below the stream. You know, like you can check that out. And also, uh, they're now going to tell themselves a little bit about you. Inks. Inks is back. MMO Inks. He's back on the scene. Okay. A Guild Wars 2 legend. A gaming titan. Okay. Welcome back to the show, Inks. What's going on? Oh, oh. Hey, Sennheiser. Thanks for, uh, th thanks for the free headphones. I appreciate it. Free. Corsair. Yeah, free. Corsair. Uh, don't miss your chance. You guys have a new headset out too. Let's uh, send me one so I can compare the two. And uh, I'm shilling. Yeah, that's right. S send me, send me free wireless headphones. Do you have a link, a referral link for people that mm. might want to pay money for that? I do somewhere. I'll have to set that up for next time. <laughs> well, you're no joggers. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I need to take lessons. I need to enroll in the in Georges's, uh marketing school. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Go and buy Sennheiser products through MMO Inks' referral link, guys. Get on that right now. Get yourself some headsets, wireless, wired, whatever it is. Okay. I mean, it's a pretty good headset. It's overpriced, but, you know, it's Sennheiser. So, oh, I mean, I don't doubt I like it. You know, it. I did. I've got a Sennheiser. I've got Sennheiser headphones. I'd highly recommend them, you know. Get on that stuff. Buy, 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 guys. You know, become a consumer. Just spend your money. You know, come on. Just, you know, funnel into the system, guys. Just do it. Just buy everything. Buy buy a few build templates. Buy a few mount skins, you know? Just you know, just maybe a few loot boxes, some black line keys. Just keep buying. Keep buying more stuff, guys. More and more and more. Keep going. Right? All right. Well, it's aside from that, like slightly unusual message there. In the bottom left corner, okay, blowing everyone's minds and shattering the illusion that the mainstream media is reliable on literally any topic. It's Nike. Yep. Hello. Yeah, check me out. I have a, a, two YouTube channels. One is gaming, one is cycling based. You can check that out if you're into cycling. I don't put much on the cycling channel anymore because it's not uh, indoor season. But in a few months, it will be winter. And I'll be on Zwift multiple times a week streaming that. And whenever there's like a cool race, I will upload it to the cycling channel. So check that out. And uh, join me on Zwift if you're ready to get uh, lean for the winter and get in form, get, get, get some tone. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So be sure to check out that. And then, of course, if you enjoyed this, guys, follow the stream. Just do it. Hit the follow button right now. And if you really liked it, that's when you break out the Twitch Primes, boys. Okay. I see a few Twitch Primes in the chat. It's time to throw those at the stream right now. Right. Okay. You know, I'm a big sellout. You know, I'm a big shill. Uh, you know, I shill all games, guys. You know, like sit, you know, any games companies out there, if you want me to uh, say your game is good and shit on the competitors, absolutely go ahead and do that. I'll do it. Uh, you know, give me that money and it, we can make it happen, guys. We can come to an arrangement. But anyway, no, in all seriousness, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. Follow both these fine gentlemen here and, you know, listen to their opinions because they are much more reliable than than what they want you to believe. Okay, but yeah, follow the stream, guys. Subscribe to the stream. Podcast, it's tea time, guys. We talk about various topics in gaming. Talk about games. Talk about Guild Wars 2. Talk about WoW. Talk about Path of Exile. Talk about all sorts of things, okay? It's, I mean, who even knows? Like, who even knows what we're going to talk about next? I don't. I have no idea. I don't plan this stuff, guys. We just go. We just talk, right? That's what we do. So, follow, subscribe, and of course, you guys have a wonderful evening. Uh, and yeah, we're going to host Roy now because Roy's doing something. And there you go. But yeah, you guys enjoy the next stream. Thank you guys so much for watching. Follow everyone here. Links below the stream. And we'll see you guys next time on the next stream or the next tea time or the next tweet, wherever we happen to see you. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.